people's name. Anyway, Tom Skyver has uh, won many has worn many hats in his Nashville career. Pennsylvania natives. <coughs> Uh, parts of well, parts of different groups. I'll let him talk about those. But I'm going to give you the the highlights. Perform uh, his award-winning song "Hurricane," better than the Nashville songwriters has had cuts by Kenny Rogers, uh, Tanya Tucker, Judd, Zingerberg, Humberdink, which that's a real problem just to be able to say. Lisa Love, Lauren, <laughs> other chart toppers. I fell in love again last night by the Forrester Sisters. Years after you, John Connolly. Uh, Long Line of Love by Michael Martin Murphy, Love Out Loud Girl, Thomas Conley, Are the Roses Not Blooming the Judds, Child Support by Barbara Mandrell, uh, his song Point of Light was a theme, Song of President George H.W. Bush's Volunteerism Program and 16th Avenue is the unofficial anthem of Music Bros. Songwriting Community. For those of you who do not know, Tom wrote that and many, many other tunes. We're going to actually get to uh, your day, so without anything else, Tom. Thanks, Eddie. Um, thank all of you. I, I <clears throat> it's not my fault that we were late. Eddie took me to Perkins and proceeded to put plate of food in front of me that took me a while to get through. But, but I was through before he was. So um, anyway, thanks for inviting me. This all started with uh, a chance encounter with Greg down in Nashville at the. Uh, Woodbird Cafe a number of months ago, and I got a few free capos and, and shared, shared with him that I was going to be in this fine city for a uh, uh, convocation of the denomination of churches that I belong to, going to hell in a handbasket, um, called Disciples of Christ. Uh, we're meeting downtown at the Indiana Convention Center, and uh, I brought uh, 10 kids up here from my youth uh, group in Nashville. I'm a uh, Youth director, um, which is actually a youth minister without the education and uh, not so much pay. Uh, I uh, decided to uh, to do this in my mid fifties um, to uh, just figure out a way to get out of the music business, which has been my, been my goal for the last fifteen years. Um, anyway, I, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I was selling Eddie at lunch. I, 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 there, there's about 6,000 people here for this convention, so there's a, there's a rather s uh, thick schedule by a little magazine of, of uh, workshops and s speeches and conversations and discussions you can go to. And I opened it up and there was one called Songwriting as Spiritual Worship, which was a new perspective for me as I approached you know, songwriting as real easy way to make God money and never have to have a real job. Uh, it's been my philosophy. But uh, I went to it, and uh, it was a group about twice the size as this, of this, and I had no idea who was going to lead it. And I was just curious, and uh, I sat down there, and uh, I realized that woman looks very familiar, and it was the girl who, uh, if, you've ever, if you've ever watched Drew Carey's old show, Whose Line Is This? It was Laura Hall. She was playing, uh, she was leading this, uh, the girl that played all the songs on there. She was leading the seminar, so that was kind of cool. Um, as Eddie said, I'm a native of Pennsylvania. Um, uh, oh, by the way, we're going to do this in four segments. Uh, the first one is very short. We're actually in the midst of it right now. I'm <laughs> telling you a little bit about myself. <laughs> this is going to be the shortest by far of all the segments. Um, the other three segments are as follows. Um, at some point, I plan on pulling that guitar out and singing uh, just a couple of my own songs, as requested by uh, Eddie. And uh, the other thing is uh, that I have been asked, since I teach songwriting, as if you can do that, um, I teach songwriting at a, a college in Nashville called Belmont University, and I brought along with me uh, a number of the exercises that I torture my students with, and I plan to torture you also. Uh, yeah, I know, but uh, maybe we'll save that for last. Uh, <clears throat> And then, of course, I uh, want to hear some of your songs. You may be surprised in what order these come out, so always be prepared like a good scout. Um, I'm 57 years old. I am the uh, uh, father of three young adult uh, children, a uh, daughter who is a missionary in Nicaragua, uh, a son who is a bartender at a Mexican restaurant in Nashville, and uh, another son who is a 
sophomore at the University of Tennessee. Um, if you ask me if I have a favorite, I say, well, of course, my son who's a bartender, uh, because it's cheaper that way. Um, <laughs> I moved to Nashville when I was 25 years old to be a songwriter, not a singer, not an artist, to be a songwriter. And uh, looking back now, uh, over how many years is that, 31, 32 years, I'm happy to say that, uh, uh, I'm humbled to say that for the most part it worked out. Um, there are major stumbles along the way, bad decisions that I made, and some really good, uh, good fortune that came my way. And we'll talk about some of that as you wish to talk about it. Um, I did make some records. Um, I was on a number of different record labels over the years. Uh, if you're a good artist, you pretty much stay on one record label because they want to keep you. And you'll note I said that I was on a number of different record labels. <laughs> um, I tried to be very involved in the community in Nashville. Uh, via the Country Music Association, the Country Music Foundation, the National Songwriters Association, and the National Songwriters Foundation, all of which I served uh, a number of, uh, of terms. And uh, then I, I wound up, for reasons I still don't understand, running RCA Records for six and a half years, which was absurd. And if you want to talk about that, <coughs> you'll have to talk to my psychiatrist. Um, <laughs> I had the... Uh, uh, I had the good fortune uh, while I was at RCA to sign Kenny Chesney, uh, which most people in the world are uh, still angry with me about, um, and also uh, Sarah Evans and uh, what was that band? Uh, uh, what was the name of that band? Soon we forget. Um, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, Minnie McCree. Uh, worked with Alabama and Clint Black and Martina McBride, and, and that was that. Uh, so, um, as I said, uh, I still write songs. I write songs for different reasons today than I wrote songs when I was 25 years old. I write songs more or less to kind of uh, just tickle my own fancy. I don't always have it in mind that I'm trying to get Rascal Flats or anybody else to record one of the songs that I'm sitting around to write. So, and uh, that's kind of it. I had started teaching songwriting at Belmont about three years ago, and that's an interesting process. Um, they're mostly uh, 18 to 22 year olds uh, who can actually go to college and get a Bachelor of Arts degree in songwriting. Okay. And, and uh, as a, if any of you, uh, any of you as parents who would consider sending your child to uh, University and spent thirty-two thousand dollars a year getting a degree in songwriting. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, oh, this is on tape. <laughs> I never know where this stuff gets. Uh, anyway, um, I I have had the joy really of uh, the only thing about the music business at this point that I can look back and say that I really liked was the actual event process of writing a song. Everything else I could be fine with having never experienced, but I did too. So my understanding is that you guys are uh, uh, it's kind of a Christian songwriting group. I mean, do you write Christian music? Is that what that means? Or is it, uh, or do you just happen to be under this umbrella of the, uh, I mean, how many of you kind of write, for the most part, Christian music? Mostly. Mostly? But yeah. Not, well, not, not totally. Not, not totally. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, <clears throat> do any of you write like really dark pagan Satan music? Not anymore. Not anymore. I'm a teenager, so I'm mad. Okay, I just wanted to, I just wanted to know. It's fine with me now. Whatever. I like the other stuff. It's like here. Well, I was like, I was telling Eddie, I, I can't do this. This, 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 this convocation, this uh, general assembly that I've been attending, where these 6,000 disciples of Christ have been gathered, it has a theme to it. Something like wholeness in a broken world or something like that. What? Healing in a broken world. Healing in a broken world. Were you there? Yeah, I was there. I'm going to be there tonight shooting the video. Sweet. So you, uh, you involved with the uh, worship services? I used to write music with a TV series. 
Oh, nice. Cool. <coughs> okay, so now, uh, like I said, we're going to be here till 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> then, no, 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 it's fine with me. That's what, that's what I, I told Eddie that I, you, know, you guys had me from 12 to 5. I'm driving back to Nashville tonight with, uh, with 10 kids and another adult. To, uh, but, uh, so you want to stay just Pretty much so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much so. I love your city. It's a great city. I, uh, we really have fun. We're we're staying in a we're staying in a camp, a Nazarene camp facility. South. I couldn't be any further away from where we are right now. It's in Camby, which is southeast, west. No, southwest. And uh, it's been interesting because there's. Uh, I mean, I'm used to being around teenagers. Is this a job that? The other adult that we brought along, the woman, uh, we were staying in this, uh, what is it? It's a 50 bunk dormitory, and uh, she was in there and it was full the other night. She couldn't take it, so she went out and got a motel room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with cable TV, which really uh, made me jealous. She had drinking the alcohol, obviously. Well, you know, on the way into this, uh, <laughs> the way it, well, the, you know, she had some in her motel room, I'm sure. <laughs> it's like I said, look, kids, on the way in, it said all the, uh, it said, uh, you know, alcohol, tobacco, and drug, drugs free. I mean, it was great. <laughs> $17 a night and all this free stuff. <laughs> uh, anyway. Now, like I said, I'm going to surprise you with uh, the way we're going to process this because if I had to sit in this room and wait for some overweight guy, 57-year-old guy, to talk for two and a half or three hours or make you do exercise before I got to play one of my songs, I think, I don't know, I might climb an office tower and say, I'm shooting a rifle. Uh, so I am going to show my, throw my first curveball at you, and I want somebody to step up here and sing one of their songs for us. And I'm going to critique your songs. Um, I'm a mild-mannered but honest uh, guy about this process, and of course, everyone else, I'm sure you're used to critiquing each other's songs a little bit, saying, oh, I like that line, or that needs a bridge, or, uh, you know, truck and violet really doesn't rhyme, or anything, anything like that, and so... <laughs> so who's going first? <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought that we could make it? The preacher read the vows, but he didn't believe it would ever last. You see, he knew our past. How would we get it right this time? You had yours and I had mine, all the kids and baggage. How would we manage? But we were in love. So damn the torpedoes for steam ahead. That's how our love. Just a reflection. 
recollection A mirror of you, a carbon copy In everything we do You're me, I'm you We're us, we're two in love forever God lives with us today, He's in our hearts, He's been with us all the way. seems to come out of nowhere, uh, like a torpedo would, uh, interestingly enough. Um, the phrase, in your eyes, is, um, you'll hear me, I bet you somebody else has this in one of their songs today. Um, it is a, it's just, it's a very overused, uh, not, not, again, not being critical at all, I'm just pointing things out. <coughs> Here's an interesting one, carbon copy. Uh, certainly someday in the near future, that's a phrase that's just going to disappear from uh, our, our lexicon, is it not? Somewhat like broken record. Uh, but uh, just an issue. I mean, we still get, <coughs> we even get emails that have CC on them. No. Carbon copy, black carbon copies, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the black carbon copies because then you can say really nasty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> 
They don't know who else is reading it. Um, then finally, the bridge um, seems to, you know, it's very, actually it's a very nice bridge and a beautiful lyric, but it kind of seems to come out of nowhere um, from the perspective of we're talking about two human beings that have these struggles and these challenges and this wonderful love for one another, and then all of a sudden, it's like First Corinthians 13 in the middle of the song about two people, which, again, I mean, it's fine. It just kind of struck me as being kind of jabbed in there, not, not necessarily. Defend yourself. Uh, this, this not being the first marriage for both of us, uh, we, uh, we did counseling with a minister prior to that. Uh, and and we, we tell people this day, uh, Tim just got married way, way, way recently, we talked about him. But the way we, we made this work is we kept, we kept God in the middle of our marriage. Uh, and uh, divorce was never an option. We, we, since they never, we said, and murder is still on the table. But uh, <laughs> divorce is not you know, there. And, and, and the fact that, that we put uh, God in the middle of our marriage, and uh, first Corinthians, yeah, I, that, that, was, uh, that was a very big part of our, uh, sure. our way. So, so, so it, it, to me, it, it fit in just right. You know, okay. which is a makes it a much more personal song, I guess. But uh, sure, um, and, and I don't I don't really write thinking about commercial aspects so much. You know, right. uh, especially on time. Uh, <laughs> especially on time. Especially on time. It's going to take that long. It's one of my shorter songs. <laughs> it's like 21 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> it only seemed that long. <laughs> um, any other observations from your uh, so-called friends? <laughs> <laughs> I have one suggestion, Greg. Um, on the second verse, where you say, you finished my sentence, I know what you mean. It seemed like if you used a one-word syllable for the word sentence, like you finished my words, it would come off your tongue better, because there's a lot of words jammed into a real quick phrase. Or thoughts. Or thoughts, something that was more one syllable right beautiful. there. That was the only thing. I love the song. It's beautiful. You know, more often than not, when I listen to, to uh, other people's work, um, whether it's a setting like this or in, in the classroom or just in general, if, you know, uh, it, it's, you know, it's kind of easy to pick out some things here and there and be <coughs> critical about, you know, detail. But more often than not, and, and I'm particularly guilty of that, Sometimes songs either work or they don't. And most times they don't. Um, I was going to tell you uh, earlier, actually, uh, before we move on, that if you think, think, of that, think about your career or your developing career as a songwriter uh, in, from the perspective of a Major League Baseball player. And you know, when Major League Baseball players, the offensive players, when, if they fail seven out of ten times, they're going to be in the Hall of Fame. Right? So I was thinking about that one day a few years ago, and uh, I actually got a calculator out and I did some calculations. And uh, going through the numbers really quickly, I think I've written about 2,000 songs in my life, and I've had about 200 of them recorded. And of those 200, about uh, maybe half of them have actually earned any money. And of those 100, there's about 20 of them that have earned money that amount to more than four digits, as in $1,000. And of those 20, there's really only 12 or 15 that made a difference in my life. Now, thank God for those 12 or 15 songs because it changed my life entirely. But if you follow the calculations out, which I'm not asking you to do, I we were a bit late. Have two young men who wanted to sit in on the uh, workshop. Sorry, uh, I, that's fine. Are they sh are they sure they really want to come in and listen to me talk? <laughs> of course. Come on in. He's got a lot of work to do. Come on in. So, uh, two. Hey guys. Hey. How's it going? Sorry. Sorry.
Yeah, we're coming to see Monty again. Oh, wow. Okay. Sounds like a far, catch up really far way away. Anyway, the point, the point of all that is that after I did the calculations, um, my, uh, my batting average is about uh, 0. Point, no, 0. 0. 0.006 is my batting average as, as a songwriter. So the thing of it is, out of 2,000 songs, about 12 songs, 12 times, I really was pretty good at it. I mean, according to the marketplace. You doing the figures? Is this your, <laughs> this your own batting average, or are you using mine? No, I'm using yours. Okay. <laughs> You're much more successful at it. <laughs> so you, you, can, you can work that out. Yeah. Basically, what, 2,000 divided into 12 or 15? Anyway, uh, so, so when I give you, you know, when I respond with some of this critique, sometimes it's just like, you know, good try. It's just probably not, you know, where it needs to be. Who knows that better than me? Who uh, who wants to go next? Who's number two? Michael. Oh, you you signed up. You don't need it. Okay. Hey Tom, while, while Mike is going. Yeah. So you you made mention of Greg's bridge in here. Yes. Did you feel like the song stood without the bridge? Yeah. Um, I I uh, I felt uh, I felt like the song uh was uh lifted musically right by the bridge and, and probably needed that to get out of the to get out of the sort of the, the sameness of the chord the chord uh, progressions. But uh, again I mean I I, I I I was personally just not that lyric just kind of seemed to be uh, out of the dark a little bit. Those of you that haven't done this before, if you'd like to make comments to the person who's um, presenting the music, you assign a date the key and then put your comments on it and then return it to the who's uh, writing and that way we can have a um, record of what your thoughts are. Second chance. 
much time Let's take our time I'm thinking Could I be without you? I don't want to know You just caught me sitting here Tearing off your nose but I'm holding on to the last line you wrote Let's stay out time Let's stay out time Second verse lyric, I think, is excellent, uh, we, especially when it ends. You know, before we do anything else, we regret it. It's just a real clear, real clear, uh, easy to follow uh, vision of, of what's what's happening there. Um, you know, so generally speaking, musically, I think this this whole song is is very nice. I mean, it's uh, it is what it is. It's 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 tender and soft and, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and that's fine. I, I really do like the, the melody and the uh, crescendo you built into the verses. Um, uh, there's something going on. Uh, especially in the first verse that I want to point out, I'm going to use this as a kind of a as they say, teaching moment. That, that, and, it, and it's not necessarily, this shows up in lots of songs that become successful, but I've, I've got a pet peeve. And, and it's always been hard for me, it's always been hard for me to describe this. And it's that, it's that uh, narrative where, Mike, you and I just did something together. We, let's, we just drove to Florida together and came back and went to the beach. And, and now, I'm, now I'm sitting here, I'm talking to you, and I'm saying, you and I just drove to Florida together. You and I were on the beach together. You and I had that fish sandwich together. You and I drove. You know that already. You were with me. And that's exactly what you're saying. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, you wrote a note. I know I wrote a note. I wrote the note. You put it on the kitchen table. I know I wrote the note and I put it on the kitchen table. Yeah, does that make sense? It's kind of like you're, you are telling somebody something they already know. Is that a weird thing to try to, it's always hard for me to define that. Does it make sense to you? Oh, okay. I guess it wasn't that weird. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, it, it's just... Um, yeah, exactly. It's kind of like the narrative, I would think, is, yeah, I found the note you left and realized that this is how you really felt when you said... Uh, again, I'm not coming down hard on you, Mike. I, I see it all the time. I do it myself. And... Uh, so uh, I want to be clear because there are certain things I can't. The reason I brought it is when I play the song, I feel like there's there's a thing in me that goes, well, that's is it quite right? Well, a great suggestion from this gentleman in the corner is like, uh, you know, I found 
I well, found that's good because that, I want that table. to be clear because I, I want it to when by the time I get to your chair is still warm. You're not even in the room anymore. That's what it's so. Your chair is still warm is fine information because she doesn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it really? Right. <laughs> but to, but to, to, to clarify early on, that's great. I appreciate it. That, no, that, that person's gone. But does that make? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's. Cool. I think that makes the story clear. Yeah. That's um, that's the yeah. kind of stuff I'm looking for. I've hesitated recording this song in any way, shape, or form because it never felt done. Oh so. well, you know, I think I think you're closer than you think. I I, I really love some of the lyrical. Uh, you know, the, the storytelling is uh, just the places that it need to be uh, just a little. Well, yeah. uh, the, the other thing is, um, maybe, maybe it's just my colloquialism, but our rear view is, I mean, we all know what you meant, but yeah. to me it's like, isn't it rear view mirror? I mean, or is it just, is rear view adequate? <laughs> I like, I think he's adequate. Okay, fine. <laughs> so much for the pro. <laughs> I totally think you're inadequate. <laughs> but keep it up. <laughs> well, good, that's fine. That's fine. When I was hearing the song, I, that's the word I was hearing, too. I mean, where's he going to say here? That right. Is, that's what I think where you're coming from. That's all. That's all. It's just a phrase. Yeah. Tom, what what would it work with it, from a, uh, uh, she left her note on the table. Her the chair was still warm. Turned it off. Brought, brought the uh, about the list of things she was sorry for. In other words, make it a person, sheet per person. Well, you know, there's. Uh, I'm bringing her back in, so it's a face to face at the end. So it's not you or not. That's the problem with it. You can't you right. can't really jump shift the right. The text. I've written the thing from more so, than one angle along the way. So Yeah. So that that would be the, the problem with that, Greg. I mean, you know, doing the first verse she and then making it you. I mean I think that gets confusing. And I mean, most people would tell you if you can make it a first person song, you're gonna be better off. Oh, that's, cool. that's one of those things that tell you how to write songs that sell. <laughs> Any other comments for uh, Mike? Yes? Well, I've never written a song, so I, I speak from absolute ignorance here. However, I've sang a lot of songs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I really, I liked your line review, but I didn't feel like you followed through on it in the following lines. Like, it, it kind of lost something with we might lose. Um, and I also felt like, I, I'm not sure you got the right hook, because I'm seeing vision and <laughs> sight and that imagery in here. And let's take her time, it may just not be the right thing there to keep repeating. It maybe try playing around with that, you know, something like, um, uh, let's take another look. I mean, not that that's the, the right one, but I, I just think that that's a, a beautiful metaphor that you're creating, and I, I, I think I'd like you to emphasize that one. So, Eddie, do you get to say something or ask something? I would ask you. Um, there are different schools of thought about this. Mm -hmm. What he has is uh, his chorus, which, uh, as I'm listening, Mike, did, did you? Never mind. Uh, <laughs> we'll never know. Not <laughs> inquiring minds. Yeah, he's got he's got verse, verse, chorus, and I'm thinking at this point, all right, I'm ready to hear this in A A B A song. That'd be the first thing I was thinking. But um, that that leaves out the best of his. Of this thing at the end there, where he has kind of a nice little thing. My my question is philosophically, I want to know where you stand on this because some songwriters say, well, <coughs> you want to hold your you want to hold your hook, you want to hold that back door, get the first line of the chorus or the last line of the chorus, and he has not done that. He has he has played his hook early on at the end of each of the lines. In fact, he did it twice at the end of the second verse. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that. I uh, I think what Mike has chosen to do is as legitimate as any other philosophical choice a songwriter might make. Uh, this is particularly a country music uh, stylistic choice. I mean, standard country song will you know, end every verse with the title and start the chorus with the title and end the chorus with the title. I mean, that, that's kind of old school country music, right? 
um, and folk music writing, frankly. Um, I, I like it. I, I, like, I like it for a lot of reasons. Um, uh, I mentioned to you that a couple of weeks ago or a week ago or so, I was at this uh, little luncheon honoring Eddie Rabbit and his cohort, Seal Country Music Star, and they were giving out these awards, and he got an award for uh, five, five or six million airplays of the song called I Love a Rainy Night. That's repeated that phrase 39 times in two and a half minutes. <laughs> so, I mean, whether you liked that song or hated it, it was, uh, it was a massive hit. It still is a massive hit. Um, yeah, I mean, Eddie, I think your point is well taken. It's, it's, a choice we, it's a choice you will make every time you sit down. Some songs, it probably is absolutely the correct thing to do. In other songs, it's uh, not necessary. Uh, you know, again, these... These hard and fast rules about songwriting is, uh, yeah, here, here's the one rule about songwriting. Your song either is really good or it sucks. <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff in between where we make, we make decisions about things like this that are, that are significant. And I'm not, I'm not being a jerk off when I say that. Um, but, but that's one of the choices we make. I happen to love this format. And I use it a lot myself. Well, it was an exercise, as I was sharing with friends earlier, but oh. it, it was an exercise very intentionally to break out of the standard thing that I was doing. Uh -huh. I was cookie cutter writing uh -huh. 50 songs in a row based on this, you know, modern approved format. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, right. I decided at the challenge of a friend to attack this with the title line at the end of each major section. Yeah. And then put then come up with the course. So it was really uh, it wasn't exactly a dare, but I wanted yeah. very much to do something out of the realm of what I was just easy sit down to do. Gotcha. Win or lose. <laughs> Anything else? I just have one thing. Yes. Um just just a comment. Um the line uh, count the good we might lose I, it just for a second, I jumped out of the song because my brain engaged, like, what's the difference between counting the good we might lose and counting the cost? And then I jumped back in again. But just for a moment, I snapped out of the song, and I lost it, and then was, had to get back into it again. Did you go to, like, Hawaii or Caribbean? <laughs> the Poconos. I'm from Pennsylvania oh, as well. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Pocono Mountains? My goodness, that's where my grandparents live. We need to talk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had no, no reason. No, that's a good point. I mean, as long as we make the songs, the lyrics will make us do well, that. That line in that song, I confess, of, out of all the things that have settled to date, has probably changed more than any other single line. I mean, it's trying to capture the thought of, you know, what are we tossing away, basically. Yeah. Sure. So. Fair enough. Good, good work. Explore yeah. that. No? Good work. Yeah, I brought it because I felt like it needed things. And I was hoping to get some stuff out. You brought it because you really enjoy ridicule and humiliation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew it was going to get comments one way or another. I wanted to be on something that I felt like had some hope, but I still needed some work. You know? yeah. By the way, how many, uh, just for my edification, how many, well, so how many, how many are there? How many are that? Uh, that, 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 that are 13. That are 13. That are 13 MR Ducks. Um, are you guys going to sing a song or two? Or, um, or one each or not? Or, um, well, I don't have any lyrics to hand out. Oh, man. You can't even come in that. <laughs> doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. So, all right, so 13 now, 14 total. And we've already heard two or 14 more? Or 14 more. So twelve left. Yes. Okay. That's cool. Um, and let's do one, let's do one more right now, and then we're going to switch gears for a minute. Okay,
lunch served on TV trays. He's not a boy, but acts that way. It's very good. Out of your mother's home. Very good. The world is a smuggest book. Don't you want? song so much and I think with its kind of bouncy little 
and so the bounce of the melody and the sort of staccato delivery of the lyrics, if you had a really hard, hard, undeniably uh, rhyming syllables at the end of those lines, I think it's going to lift it up okay. uh, considerably. Just, just something that you might want to work with. Since it's such a new song, yeah. and the, the, the dough is still malleable. Right? Okay. Okay. Any other comments for about uh, Larry. Larry Go? Yes, sir. Um, I like the uh, piano riff at the end. The little flat five thing was pretty cool. cool. Thank you. Um, my son's actually introduced me to that because I never took jazz or improv, and he said you can't resolve everything at the end of something more jazzy. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it might be up for Veggie Tales. <laughs> Tom, are, are you just as a personal preference? Are you opposed to the friendly lines, or I mean, do you go for hard rhyme as a preference? I've, you, I've been around people who they don't want to talk to you in my seats. Well, hard I'll, rhymes only. I'll talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I it. No, I mean, I, I just uh, no. I mean, I think if you, if anyone would uh, could stand the boredom of and analyzing a couple of my songs, you'll find that I I do it too. But I. I prefer, I, I much rather have a hard run, but it's a personal preference and it's becoming kind of old fashioned, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, it's interesting, a lot of people will tell you that, you know, holding out for hard rhymes just really diminishes your choice, choices. If you hang in there a while and you give it time to ruminate and, uh, you know, you, you're going to find going to find very often something perfect is sitting out there waiting for you that you never imagined. So, um, I think it was something I, I read that, that you quoted, it's sort of like a half a dozen uh, perfect drawings from Mount. Yeah, something. I have that in one of my... Actually, we're going to do that exercise, and, and actually, I think we're going to do it right now. Okay. So, great, great segue. Yes, sir? Can the song sound uh, any more strange <coughs> musically based on the... Or is that, or is that like that is a perfect chord progression kind of thing for the oddness factor of what the song is supposed to be? It isn't funny to me anyway. Do you understand the question? Um, not exactly. Like I don't know what she was playing. It sounded like what he was playing was was a little bit, um, yeah, jacked up to it to make it sound like it's supposed to be. It's a compliment. And, but was she playing two straight chords? In other words, is there... I'll tell you why that happened. Yeah. I, I can't read music, so I play uh -huh. by ear. And I'm really limited what I can do with the piano. So he is my, he is the completion of my chords that Got I can't... It. Okay, so that's why I don't know cool, what the chord progression yeah. is. I'm just completely clueless. Also, on the intro, my horn was incredibly flat. <laughs> so, okay, so then you well, that it. might be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha. I mean, so I something really awesome that. on the piano, right? Could go. I'm yeah, really, I mean, I, I'm really I suppose you could, uh, yeah. you could, you could put that in a, a, a variety of, uh, of settings. But I, I mean, that kind of does it the way it was yeah. kind of grouped in. There. I would love to hear like a real pianist. I, I don't call myself a pianist. I just play keyboard. Uh, I'd love to hear a pianist take that song and put in some incredible uh, chords. I mean, even working with Eddie, he's giving me some chords. Like, Carrie, if you put this chord in there, it would. I really like it. Sweet, thank you. Yes. Um, okay, let's do. Uh, let's take a little uh, a turn here. And uh, if you've got, does everybody have something to write with? Like a tablet. I mean, a paper tablets. Um, I want. I want you all to do a little written exercise. If you don't mind. Actually, we're going to do a number of these. So if uh, if we need to get some notebooks or something. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> okay, what I what I what I'd like you to do is um um, exactly what Steve suggested here. We're going to do a, uh, a very brief exercise. And you're going to have two columns. I suspect the one on the left, which is going to be column number one, is going to be uh, 
well, I won't say anything about it because you're going to have two columns, column one, column two. Column one, underneath it, I want you to write every word that you can think of in the English language. Wait, I'll even take it now. Let's just stick with the English language. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that, rhyme, that is an absolutely, undeniably perfect rhyme for the word love. I love you. Yeah. Column one. Column one. Just one word? Hmm? Just like list words? Just list words that are absolutely perfect rhymes for the word like love. Same syllables and everything. Perfect rhyme. I'll, well, yeah, I guess a perfect rhyme would be a one syllable word, but I will, I will allow you to make, instead of perfect, uh, what would that word be? Imperfect. Imperfect. <laughs> no, no, no. no it's, more, than, more than one syllable is fine as long as it ends with. Uh, and while you're at it, column two, I want you to list every word that you can think of that makes a pretty good attempt at rhyming with love that we most of us use in our songs all the time. in the second half of the set. <laughs> Until I write it. How's the play to write it? Right. Only Okay, we've got a million of these exercises to do if we choose to do them. So let's let's just stop this one, nip it in the bud, and uh, so who wants to read their list number one? Don't be, be shy. First, yeah, we'll please. Have any. <laughs> love above, shove above, and that was it. Shove above up. Of oh, love. So what, how many was that? Five. Dove. Four. Dove. 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 If you're Elmer Fudd, love. <laughs> I think you can use that one time in your career, and that's it. <laughs> we can go discover. Oh, oh, okay. uh, I loop around a lot, so I wrote a lot of those down, like cub or gov. That's good. I like to let words kind of wrap them into the next line. Yeah. What is that? Okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> You'll die if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine if you, it's fine if you do that. If, if you, I mean, if it's, yeah, I mean, I heartily encourage that if it, if it is natural, you know, if it really fits with the melodic flow and the, 
you know, a meter of lines. Sure. Absolutely. You've got a lot. Can we leave any out? Yes, you have another one? Okay. Love. Love. If, you're, love if you abbreviate government, you can get gov. Right, like dot gov? Yeah. 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 Right. That's where you get shove. Yeah, shove. No, I said shove. I said shove. I didn't say it. Yeah, shove. 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 Uh, uh, okay, uh, now, column two. Who wants to read column Who thinks they have the most in column two? Kathy. Oh Hi, right. anybody. Anybody go. Uh, okay. Rough, yeah. enough, tough, gruff, hover. Okay. Good. So we got those off rhymes. Yeah, rough and tough. Bluff and tough. Stubbs. What else? Plug, the UG rhymes? <laughs> the, 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 the what? UG. Okay. Mud, blood, mud, crud. Crud always goes with blood. Well, I, I don't even know why I point that exercise out, except we do this all the time. and. I think if there's enough space separating the rhymes, we can get away with it. But just remember, it's it's a very they're generally they're they're very soft rhymes, and that's why so many of us are tempted to write in all of our songs when push came to shove, or <laughs> like a hand in a glove. Or, no one will rise above. <coughs> or what? Yeah, <laughs> run for a cup. In my hub, her craft. Alright, we're going to do something else. Now, this, this, this is for total fun, but I'm going to do a couple of exercises that are intended to make you kind of think around the corner, um, think a little more creatively. And right now we're all, this is all about lyric writing and lyrical composition. It's not about melody numbers. But I want you to let your inhibitions go to a point. <laughs> and, then, and then rein them back in quickly. Uh, uh, and I want you to do the following. I want you to write it. I want you to write a, the title of the song that you would create for the following list of topics I'm going to give you. Okay? You just write the title. I don't care if it's fun, funny, serious, morbid, sad, whatever it is. Alright? You just write a song title for this follow these following ten topics. Okay? First one. Hurricane Katrina. Okay, I'm going to go quickly. <coughs> you may want to number them in case you can't think of anything. Number two is a returning soldier. Number three is a homeless family. Number four, unexpectedly running into an old flame. Number 
five is your best friend's wedding. Six, I guess, uh, a breathtaking sunset. <laughs> you guys need to behave. Or it's not me. It's I'm really hard you, to think of right here. I'm going to give you your money back, and uh, <laughs> you're going to have to leave. She's very distracted. I'm going to have to write you a personal check for the money. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, the Confederate flag. Confederate flag. Remember, I teach in the South. <laughs> you don't have to come up with it, one for everything. Don't look at that. Next one is. Uh, Number eight is uh, a speeding ticket. Uh, number nine. Second last one is working at Walmart. title for uh, number one, Hurricane Katrina. Just yeah. yell it out. You're all funny. Left behind. Left behind. Doomed to see. Doomed to see. Perfect storm. Sweet. She what blew a big wind was. What a big wind was. What was this one? She blew in. Oh. Blown away. away. Bitter bowl. Bitter bowl? Yeah. City in a bowl. Yeah. Sweet. Good work. When I'm welcome. Wind I'm welcome. That's very good. Are these all the songs you need ideas for? <laughs> They're all going right into my Mac. I've got four people all over the country working on it. I'll take that chorus. That's good. Yeah. 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 We're not sharing it anymore. Uh, okay, great. Really great. Uh, number two, a returning soldier. Let's hear him. Shock and all. Shock and all. Forward thinking. That's one of my songs. It's about a returning soldier. Okay. Both still so far. Great. One stripes. One stripes. What once was? Huh? What once was? Oh, covered by the red, white, and blue. Great. Now you're here. Back again. <clears throat> Very good. Excellent. Did, did we meet you there? These are great titles, folks. I hope you take them home and work on them. <laughs> Uh, I really do. Number three, a uh, homeless family. What brought us through? What was that? What brought us through? Okay. Sidewalks and shelters. Nobody's home. Light months. These are great. Outward bound. Better way. Outward bound? Cardboard. My cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Write it down. I said, what's the sign above their door? What's the sign above their door? Sanders. I think it goes with yours. Sanders. Yeah, I've got, I've got, your, I've got the bridge for your tune. So. Very good, guys and gals. All right, number four is uh, running into an old, uh, running into an old uh, flame. Uh, all right, we better go. We're starting to, got okay. Great. No? Oh. 
Making you stay.
The old screen door slams. I look up and see you running in the grass across the yard. Arms stretched before you, reaching for the sky. Where you fly, I'm watching you fly. I watch from a distance your laughter overflows like sunshine spilling down. I can't remember where the days go. I'm holding my breath, trying to slow. Stretched before you, reaching to the sky. Time to fly. I'm watching you fly. I watch from a distance. Her laughter overflows like sunshine spilling down. I can't remember where the days go. Okay. Is that not 
Um, no, well, it wasn't. I mean, I, I, I assumed in the first verse that uh, it was certainly about a child that you were observing, and probably you were. Yeah. Uh, but you're not sure. <laughs> I don't think it was mine. <laughs> um, and then, um, so then, uh, I guess when I heard you whisper her name, I thought you were talking about somebody was whispering the person's name in the first verse. In other words, I don't know. I, I was just kind of following along the story, and it seemed like maybe that was your husband talking to your child. That was a little unclear to me, and uh, I'm not a smart person. So um, now, uh, but uh, did anybody else have that issue? Yeah. See? It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's a beautiful story, and I think it deserves to be very, very clear. So, so is the you whisper her name? Is that your son saying the name of like his girlfriend or something? Yeah. Okay. Um, having. And see you running in the grass across the yard is the second line of the first verse. That's not clear then when I'm talking about you whisper her name later. Did you think I was talking to a different person? You know, yes, we're about a different person. Um, and I'm just being brutally honest about that. Yeah. Yes, sir? I kind of enjoyed how you don't really, um, you kind of don't know who you're singing to. It's kind of like, um, I, I don't know. It might just be me. Uh, I kind of enjoy a little bit of enigma. Uh, okay, that's fair. Yeah. I wasn't really going for enigma, but sorry. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Okay. Our youngest son. Yeah. Yeah. As I was listening to it and rereading the lyrics, I kind of thought. Uh, like just from like this perspective, not actually knowing you, like personally, it kind of seemed like. Um, it seemed like it, there was a person running out the door, and then um, in the second verse, it looked like maybe there's an ex-husband or something that um, is whispering to her something, and you know, and, um, that kind of thing. Like, not that I want to keep you. I've always known you were never mind anyway. That kind of thing. It just it it seemed like the story got a little frayed from what you actually wanted to portray. I need to have something that says, now that you're grown up, now that you're a man, not now that... Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah, I think that is. I thought it was the song about a much younger kid. It is. The first part is, it's yeah. watching him fly in two different respects. <coughs> you know, as a little boy, and then I'm seeing him fly out the door. Yeah. Yeah, okay, well, I mean, fair enough. I mean, it's, it's a great concept. I just think that that second verse really needs to clarify a little. I mean... You know, shy of sending, you know, like a, a pamphlet out. With the <laughs> <laughs> what I intended here uh, was, no, I mean, it could be even, she whispers, she whispers your name, you know, you look, you look up. I mean, that would even, I, I, I don't know if that's enough, but, and I don't want to disparage this because it's a really sweet, a sweet song. Oh, well, if it's not clear, it doesn't work, so I need to know why. Yes. Well, I, I like the way um, that, the uh, chorus is worded uh, really well. Uh, like uh, the first and the second verses are both um, uh, at different times in your son's life, right? Mm -hmm. So, and but the chorus can um, it kind of shows how some things don't change when a person grows up. Yeah. Very astute for you. I had a question when I when you got to down. I love the imagery. Your laughter overflows like sunshine spilling down. But when you when you sang the word down, when I read it, I went mm, not sure. But then when I saw you repeat it, I went hmm, wonder if that could be better. Um, just didn't like the down on sunshine spilling. You know, overflows like laughter. The, the word of down. melody. Or both. Just the word. Just that word. I love that phrase. Yeah, it's a beautiful. Image. And I, you know, yeah, classic, classically, you would not use the word down to rhyme with the word down. I mean, it's just, uh, but that, that's sort of. That's a perfect one. Yeah. Too perfect, as they say. <laughs> what rhymes with love? Love. <laughs> I did have it on my list. <laughs> 
it's a lovely song. I, I would encourage you to, to, to look uh, Enigma aside. I would uh, encourage you to kind of kind of work with that second verse a little bit, or with both the verses, and, and just make sure that it's clear that what's going on. And there's a little bit of passage of time, or a significant passage of time from childhood to marital, start that fiance. You know. And I have one, one other curious thing about this <coughs> lyric sheet. Uh, this is uh, from the collection, oh. book 19. How many songs have you written? It's just ten times more to go. Like just every He's year, the end of the year, you put them together, you copyright them for one key instead of. Oh, I see. A lot. Okay. Just, Great. That was Very good. One of my favorite things about the song that I enjoy is trying to apply to mine. I love the title mine. When it's the holding my breath, trying to slow time down, it offers the option in the in the melody itself. I'm holding my yes, yeah. breath. Really trying to slow. That you can actually do what the words say. Yeah. It's really cool. Excellent. Good job. Yeah. I've got a question for you. Yes, sir. Um, the way that Kathy wraps the song up, you know, she's saying, I'm, I'm holding up my breath, trying to slow the time down. And she does the same, the same thing at the back of the second chorus. At the end of the third chorus, there's a twist. She says, I'm holding my breath, and then she just spilled it. Because uh -huh. time won't slow, slow down. We thought about that. Well, I think, I think actually it's a... It's genius, I think. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think it's a... Uh, <laughs> I think it's a good decision. I mean, it, it's, it's... Because in a way, it's just sort of emphasizing the fact that, you know, holding my breath... It's insignificant. So she's finally kind of felt like she was releasing to that, she was surrendering to that. So at that point in the song, which is basically the the ending or the culmination of this thought, it's I make sense. Is that a good answer? Good for you. Yeah, your good for you. Good for you, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> or something, it could clarify all those issues that you had not knowing what the song was about. You know what I mean? Is that legal? <laughs> For the title not to be in the song? Uh, I, I would have had a lady hand me a CD once that the title would show up in any of her songs. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, like when they say, yeah, really, I mean, right? yeah, this could be, what's his name? Annie's song. Well, I mean, it's certainly fine. Um, Slow time down is, uh, I think, is a, I mean, my personal response to that is it's more interesting than holding my breath. Mm -hmm. How about I'm turning blue? He's a smurf out. All right, let's move on. We gotta keep going, or we're not gonna get. It's neither a Christian song or a pagan or Satan song. 
Are you doing it? Oh, this is nice. Nice. Grace, you're gonna make me videotape a boombox for five minutes. I did. Like so people like to criticize with a higher. Oh. Because what hasn't already been said about Christ? Like this church. Yeah. In the Mexican village of La Gloria, Edgar Hernandez got sick. Now his claim to fame is starting the big pandemic. U.S. Customs and Border Protection can't stop viral immigration, and there ain't no money in the treasury for a nationwide vaccination. When I got sick, I'd say I'm sick as a dog. It's politically incorrect to say I'm sick as a hog. It's like, 
How many times have you gone to a movie that's supposed to be funny and it just ain't funny and it's really hard to make a funny movie? Or uh, you know, write a funny novel or a story or what have you. So I admire the effort and uh, I'll be honest with you, I've never actually considered the, flack, the fact that, uh, that uh, flu was uh, uh, actually a uh, past. <coughs> What is that? So, hey, good work. I mean, I don't know. Uh, there, there's some really wonderful lines in here. And, uh, uh, you know, this has a was practice, I guess. You know, hey, it's great practice. And I'm not dead serious. I, I write uh, really. If you look through the last ten years of my songs, the stuff that I've written, I, it's uh, I try to pick out it. It's, and it's usually more often than not a current topic. Um, but you did, you know, you did a, you did a great job with it. Um, what makes it not funny to you? <clears throat> makes it not funny to me? Yeah. <laughs> who, who told you I, who told you I did not make it funny? Uh, oh. <laughs> um, nothing makes it not funny. I, I mean, I think it is funny. Uh, I, I think there's, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, there, there'd be the, when you do the, when you actually do the deed of, Introducing the when pigs fly yeah. versus the swine flu. I mean that. I mean that. That's where the whole kind of <coughs> focus of the hook is. I mean that, that's what turns the whole thing around. Um, it's probably. I mean, it's not bad what you've done. Uh, and that, that, that's probably where the, the key to the whole thing is. It, if it could be a little more subtle, uh, so that you know, that's the thing about. Uh, I think humor has got to be subtle, and, and uh, uh, then again, I'm not sure the audience, the general audience, feels that way. So, does anybody else have a comment about that? Mm -hmm. what, 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 well, I think you should send it to Bob and Tom. I did. I did. Yeah. And I debated it with, with the producer for two days, and then he sent me some stuff that didn't air, like three songs, and they totally blew this away in production value, same timing skills, same exact topic. He said. It's just not, none of it's funny right now. It's not funny enough. I told you that? Because <laughs> it's a yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, so it was a nice, I did. <laughs> I just like overall. I just feel like this is a song of one-liners, and when you're gonna do one-liners, every line's got to be strong. And so I just don't like. There's lots of funny little ha-ha bits, but there's no laugh out like yeah. real. For me, there was no like. Wow, that's really, really funny. Yeah. Kind of thing. That's kind of where I get the, you know, it's not funny enough. It's funny, yeah. but it's fun. Yeah, it's like, to me, it's cute, not necessarily funny. Cute. It's a cute song, not necessarily that's funny. That's why I want to be known for. I don't like cute songs. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, can you help me with that? I get the production of that game. <laughs> I'm maybe I'm rare, but I appreciate yeah. sarcasm as humor. But that's a lot of people off. just like outright. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So that's why you like this. Oh, a lot of sarcasm. <laughs> it's tough. I mean, I think it's, I think, again, I think one of the hardest things to do in the world is to write something that's just genuinely kind of rivetingly funny from beginning to end. Yeah, put somebody down there. The only other suggestion I've gotten really was uh, get a bunch of blind pigs in a video and yeah. slap this against it, put it on YouTube, and have a nice day. <laughs> so, that would be you cute know, on YouTube, actually. That was, that was pretty much it. Renee? Yeah. Last thing, is this a song about swine flu or is this a song about politics? Right. Uh, again, I ran out of Christian stuff to write this and I figured I'd just yeah. be crazy. It actually yes, it's about political. More about politics. Right. I said, like, pick, pick a road and go down it. Oh, really? You know, e either either talk about swine flu and, and get rid of all the politics or, or, or go down the politics road, which is very, very funny. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, you say it's not a Christian song, but you know, there's that passage where Jesus put the nasty spirits in all those pigs and they ran off. Yeah. Go off the edge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they would be cows that would call it a legendary story. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're 
you're milking it for all it's worth. <laughs> I'll tell you guys, if, if you ever make trips down to Nashville, uh, try to do it on a weekend. Like you say Friday night when uh, Tom and Don Schlitz, Red Knobloch, Joe Earl Johnson, that once a month they do it in the round down there. And there's there's a bunch of funny songs that, that these guys write that are rich. And, and plus all the, the stuff that goes on in between the songs. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's just one of the most entertaining nights you, you can have. <laughs> while the setting and listening to, you know, three really top-notch songwriters. And, uh, I mean, the songs, you know, I'm allergic to crazy, you know, stuff like that, you know, it's just, it's just hilarious, but it's all well-written, you know, it's just so well-written. Uh, well, thanks, Art. Yeah, I hope you do. I'd love to see you there. Let's listen to one more song, and then we we'll talk a little more about some stuff. Yeah. Is this, this is here?
it's a sweet little presentation. Um, <clears throat> let me say, um, uh, Roman numeral one, I think there's a segment of this population who would absolutely love this song. A se segment of our population. Um, and I think there's an equally large segment of this population who would reject it thoroughly and across the board. Okay, so in, 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 in the, uh, uh, what is the word, from the perspective of, of uh, I'll report you decide, fair and balanced, Fox News songwriting and analysis. <laughs> no, I want to say that because it, 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 it's, it's really important that I say that up front because I'm sincere in, in saying both those things. Um, and let me, start, let me start with the dark side of what I'm saying. I think that uh, as, as well put together and fashioned as this is, the language is very, um, it's not old fashioned, it's just, it's just old fashioned. It's, it's, um, it's not hip, it's not now, it's not anything that I think young people would relate to. It's, it's more of a, um, it, because it, I know I know this kind of writing really well because I grew up with it in the little Baptist church I grew up with. It was very sort of sterile and pristine. Not, and I'm not I'm not slamming it. I'm just being real honest. With it. It, it, it is a form of writing that has been very successful, but it's 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 almost too clean. It's only it's like there's there's no dirt on it. There's no there's no reality to it. Uh, you talk about the kid that wears the dark clothes and the piercings and, and that's about as close as you get and you're in a you're a detached observer it's like uh, Jesus loves you too <laughs> but I'm not gonna <laughs> I mean, I mean no, do you not understand what I'm saying I'm, again I'm not I'm, I'm trying to be uh, I'm just trying to, to, to be a reflection of how I, I know that's what I'm the kids in my youth group if they would hear this they'd go oh my what what is this and yet I know a whole bunch of people who would just embrace it so for those people, I think it's very it's very well written. But there's a sense of arrogance is much too harsh a word. But there's a sense that you you have you're sitting it's like an aloofness your, on your ivory tower and saying she's dressed too well, she has a miserable life, but Jesus loves her. He's got you know uh, thumbtacks in his eye, but Jesus <laughs> loves him anyway. Does it make sense? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I had the lip box checked, and they gave me the same. Who, who, did, who did that? Pete, Pat, Lipa. And they gave me the same input. Why do I know their names? Down there. Oh. And they were somewhere too. Yeah, I know who they are. Okay. I mean, I don't know them well. But, I know they are. Um, <clears throat> so I rewrote it oh. thinking I, I changed it, and apparently I have a sentence. You're just too sweet. <laughs> yes. May I say something, Jody? Uh -huh. You know I love you very much. Yeah. I agree with her, and I'm not a professional anyway. But I listen to a lot of Maranatha children's tapes with my kids. I would buy this, actually, if the lyrics were about children, not adults. If you were, if the two lyrics, the chorus is, is beautiful for a children's yeah. tape. And if the lyrics were about, you know, the little boy, if, if it was, if it was a song about children accepting <coughs> other children, which there's a huge need for that. With a lot of bullying in the schools. Yeah. I think this would be a great song for like Maranatha music or something for the children's tapes. It does to me sound contrite for an adult song. Like, I, think that's a great, I think that's a great point. Kind of ecumenical. That's kind of that's kind of the way I saw it. I was like, this song is perfect for that like age group, except for the fact that I think if a kid was like, uh, who's the kid with piercings and black clothes? <laughs> yeah, you couldn't sell it as a child song now, yeah. but you could if you were it It's like perfect for children, I think. But that's just not the way I see it, I guess. In the back, we'll get to you next. Um, I just had, um, and I'm usually the guy who does this, um, I had a problem with the, the bridge and the theology. Um, Jesus would not do it all again. He was the once and for all propitiation of our sin. And when he comes back again, he's going to come on a horseback and a sword and with a major can of whoop butt. And so if you're going to teach the Bible, uh, teach it right. Tell it all, brother. Okay? I don't think you're really told that one. Uh, did you all hear that joke again? Well played. That's, that's, that's the truth. That's fine. That's, that's fine. the word. You know? Um, yes, sir. Um... I do agree that it, it would be really perfect for like um, a younger child setting. I think that's uh, wise thing to say. 
and being of this age group with the kids with <coughs> piercings and clothes and whatever, I'm I'm in a really heavy metal band, so I I you know I'm associated with this type of stuff, and I think it's kind of um, with this song that uh, it's kind of uh, written and maybe you know just kind of aimed towards like a younger age group and if you kind of uh, have like um, talk about it like a guy with piercings and black clothes it's kind of like you know shooting into um, a higher age group and so I think you should like kind of uh, um, yeah you know what I'm trying to go on? Yeah. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> oh, um, well, that's great. I, I kind of I understand what he's saying. Um, the, the whole thing with it, I mean, like, if, if I'm getting what you're hitting at, like, um, like I'm sure uh, some of the um, more mature age group would uh, hear this and say, oh, yeah, Jesus definitely loves that dark-looking kid, you know? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like, uh, some of those dark-looking kids know that Jesus loves them and stuff. And I mean, maybe if you were, if you don't want to rewrite it to, for little kids, I mean, maybe you could portray that they already know that because some of them do. I mean, it seems a little bit stereotypical. Yeah, it's just, it might be offensive to other people. Mark Hall from Casting Crowns does an especially good job on just about every one of their records with at least one song that guilts the church in its view of those people. So we could take a different twist and talk about how we we are guilty of that space between us and some of those people that we write songs about. Mm -hmm. Actually, I heard one of those songs in that meeting yesterday. Uh, it was right, right off the first record of We Are The Body. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second record depends on it with even more. Oh. How do I look? You look great. <laughs> 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 you. Okay, good work. We're, let's uh, let's move on to something else, and we'll get back to the next three or four songs in about twenty minutes. Um, I have a million things to do. I really do have a million things to do here. A million. That's an over exaggeration. Probably eight. Um, but uh, I also have a list of questions that I want to ask you that are intended to uh, um, solicit your thoughts and responses on various uh, things you're doing as uh, songwriters, aspiring songwriters, uh, future songwriters, developing songwriters. Right now, I want to ask you what it is you have on your minds in terms of any questions uh, or procedures or processes or things you're stuck with, uh, mystery, uh, I mean anything about anything about Nashville that you may want to know about. And I'm not suggesting you do. I'm just saying let's just stop and let's talk about what you want to talk for a while. <coughs> yes, sir. Um, how did you um, acquire your job position things? Did you study in Nashville? To no, no, um, I did not. I'm a reasonably uneducated uh, man who went to college for three years and um, quit and uh, basically devoted my life at the age of 20 to being a songwriter. I moved to New York for five years, and then I moved to Nashville five years after, well, yeah, at, at, when, at the age of 25, and all I did was, uh, I mean, I never went to songwriting seminars, and I didn't study music, and I didn't take guitar lessons, and I just kind of kept on writing songs, and I had written about 300, 350 songs before I moved to Nashville, most of, most of which were really bad. but. I didn't care. I was just, I was just eat up with it, and I just got after it. And uh, it's a totally different town now. In 1978, when I got off, I got off uh, an airplane and landed in Nashville with everything I owned in a suitcase and a guitar. And um, 
just started going out to the clubs down there, which you could pretty much play any night of the week anywhere in front of whoever was there, mostly other songwriters who were really drunk. And uh, occasion, and then and, and I started making friends and started uh, playing in front of people who would tell a friend that, you know, I heard this guy the other night from Pennsylvania, he's got a couple of good songs and blah, blah, blah. And it went from there. So uh, there was nothing. Uh, my story is really not very different at all from anybody else's that I know. Uh, <clears throat> do not go home and tell your uh, mom and dad that I suggested you should quit school and move to Nashville, because uh, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, remember that I said that Nashville, a lot, Nashville is not the only music community in the United States. Indianapolis, Indiana is a music community. You've got a music community right here, whether you, and I think you probably all consider that a music community this music community, and as you should, because that's exactly what it is. It's no different in Nashville, except the outlets are larger and uh, more focused and more centralized. Uh, Austin, Texas is a music, every, every city in this country is a music community. There are probably five that stand out. Nashville is certainly one of them. And at the moment, you know, with the exception of maybe Los Angeles, and that's a maybe, is probably the most, uh, I would say it's the most profound music community because there's just so much going on there. Um, so that, that's, I do not have a degree in music. Uh, and, uh, I just, I loved songs, I always loved songs. I, I copied from people, oh, that's another thing. I didn't, I didn't plagiarize from people, but I copied people. I have, and I hope you do the same thing. And no matter who your who your songwriting heroes are, who are they? Who do you love? You. <laughs> That's such a good answer. <laughs> 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 James Taylor. Okay, James Taylor. John Mayer. John Mayer. I listen to Don Henley a lot very usually. Don Henley? Yeah. Oh, he's a wonderful a songwriter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hmm? Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac. Um, but even if, you know, if it's the Gaithers, I'll tell you, I, I list in my top five favorite songwriters uh, a woman named Fanny J. Crosby. Does anybody know who that is? She's incredible. I mean, she was incredible, uh, what, what she did in her lifetime. I mean, to me, I mean, I've got like Paul Simon, Bob Dylan, <coughs> Fanny J. Crosby, you know, same old <laughs> list of suspects, uh, the usual suspects. So, and I copied from them. I learned from them. I, I absolutely did, and uh, thus you end up, hopefully, there's enough of your own style within you that you are not afraid of or ashamed of, that you can get under control and, you know, kind of knead it in with your heroes, and voila, there's a new writer. So, we carry this stuff forward. Yes? Um, all right, like, I'm really into jazz. Uh -huh. um, I do my trumpet and stuff, and right. usually it's better than what I did today. Um, but uh, so, like, as a jazz artist, is the is the music community much different? Like, you should um, do you need like a bunch of college to go out and gig, or do you just gig? And, I mean, I, do, I I'm uh, <laughs> college, say college. No, um, I, I I am I cannot give you a good answer. Because I, I, I just don't, I don't know. I, I, I sincerely, um, I, it's just not a genre that I'm familiar with, um, nor one that I have appreciated much. Not not because I've rejected it. I just haven't embraced it. So, um, you know, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm not sure if uh, you know current jazz musicians are highly educated people or not. I suspect many of them are. <laughs> but you know, no matter no matter if you're if you're going to go to uh, four years of uh, liberal arts undergraduate school and then follow it up with a master's degree in trumpet and then a doctorate in trumpet, uh, you know the main thing you need to do during all of it is play your trumpet. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, know I mean, that. You know, that's one thing I've learned is you just got to practice. That's what yeah. It's all about. You know, and Eddie and I were talking at lunch about this. Uh, he was talking about. You know, the years he spent, uh, you know, really committed, and the years he still spends committed to being a songwriter. 
and musician and so on and so forth, performer. But at some point he made a conscious decision to step, as he says, on the other side of the glass and engineer and be helpful with production with the people in that the more he uses that side of the brain, the more the other side of his brain that used to, 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 to work as a writer and a creator is kind of gone a little bit dormant. And it happens. It's kind of like if any of you play, do any of you play golf? Uh, well, any sport, any, 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 any endeavor that you have, uh, you know, you may have been a really good golfer at one time. And the reason you were a really good golfer at one time is because you probably played five times a week and practiced on the other two days. And if you quit, if you were really good and you quit and you go back a year and a half later and try to play the same game, forget it. You're gonna, so, same thing, it's the same thing with writing. Anyway, anything else? Yes, Mark. Well, not that my advice matters, but if I could give advice to a younger person, one of the things I regret is neglecting opportunities for some higher levels of technical training, whether it was going to college or not, because right. now I find myself wanting to communicate with excellent musicians that only have that language. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, they tolerate me and my clumsy way of trying to get my point across, to where a little technical training back when my <coughs> brain could absorb a whole lot more. <laughs> anyway, when I was yeah. younger, would have really been helpful a long way. Mm -hmm. good, good I know point. what you're saying, buddy. Understand. Yeah. Do you all ever get together and just like jam, or like have guitar pools or circle? We uh, do in the rounds, uh, okay. three or four people, and there's some jam in those cases. We, well, I, I, uh, boy, it's so funny. Huh? Oh, no. When I didn't complete the circle phrase. Um, oh, never mind. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, this, this is a, this is a simple thing, but. but <laughs> You guys are pals, or at least there are small groups of you. I mean, these formal meetings are great, but uh, you know, I, I I still get together with my buddies in one of our houses once or twice a month, and we sit around and you know maybe drink a couple of beers and just sit around and play new songs and play on each other's stuff and sing harmonies and just kind of kind of get tight with that stuff. It's it's fun. That's what I wanted this group to be. I, I didn't want to get all organized and have. Seminars and stuff. I just wanted to get together and have fun. Jeez, we had to just carry away. Get out of here. Get out of here. It's jammed. Fine. Is all that stretching? Is it still No, I don't. Um, Eddie and I were, that's another thing. Eddie and I talked a lot today. Actually, Eddie did. Which is why we were late, because he hadn't finished his breakfast, and I was finished going, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, true. I um I had some great friends, uh you know, I, um I inevitably. People come to Nashville kind of in waves. I mean, there are like, the, 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 we call them classes down there. Uh, that was, those are, that's, that's that group from 78 and so on. So, so some, of the, some of the folks I arrived with in 1978, like Paul Overstreet and uh, Schlitz was there a few years before me, but. Paul Davis, about 77. So. Yeah, Paul Davis, we're talking about Paul Davis today too. Uh, Richard Lee, Jamie O'Hara, Gary Nicholson, a lot of really. Tony Rod. Well, Tony was actually much later than that, but not, he still we still became pals. And Paul was one of the first. Paul was one of the first people that I actually Paul Overstreet sat down and wrote a song with. I had never written a song with someone else. I always thought, well, that's weird. Why would you do that? That's the oddest thing I could ever think of. And then, but that's that's how natural works. Uh, can I say something real quick? Something else I think that I read that you said. Um, so you don't necessarily believe in the collaboration aspects of how well, they push it on you. Yeah, yeah, it's a natural way. And, um, I mean, I don't believe in it. I don't. I don't. I mean, I, mean, it, I just think it uh, it makes it has the potential for making some really watered down stuff. I mean, it's like it's like two and two does not necessarily make four, or or one plus one doesn't necessarily make two. That whatever that would be. But that you know, it's just an opinion. Yeah, it's not. But yeah, I still see, uh, I, no, I don't. Why did I say yes? I don't see Paul. I haven't seen, I've seen Paul over the street five times in the last 20 years. So, um, Paul Davis is dead. Um, I 
see Fred Noblon, Don Schlitz, and Tony Ron all the time. Still hanging out there. Was the Paul Over Street meeting? Did he initiate the meeting? Were you put together by? You mean initially? An, an, yeah, an employer. You know. We we wrote. We ended up writing as both as very young guys for uh, a very small publishing company, Nashville. That was <coughs> pretty much funded by Eddie Rabbit, the old country sure. state singer, sure. since deceased. And uh, Paul and I ended up there as sort of the the young bucks, and uh, uh, we were talking one day. We were very different people. Paul's. You know, like a, he's like an Assemblies of God. His dad was an Assemblies of God preacher from deep rural Mississippi, and I'm like a steel, steel worker's kid from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And we were like really far apart, but when we wrote together, it was kind of a neat combination of uh, cultures. So good time again. I guess I'm just curious if you ran into each other at a no. restaurant one day, or if you no, it was sort of uh, were put together. It was sort of manufactured, yeah. you know, sort of created. Yeah. So how do you um, just churn out songs like 500 of them, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, let, first of all, I'm 57 years old, and I've been doing this for. I've been doing this. <laughs> Well, yeah, I start. I mean, I really started writing songs almost every day of my life since I was 20 years old. I mean, that's when I started doing like it. One per day? So it's 37. Yeah. No, I haven't written one song per day. That would, no, but, but I mean, I, I at least was working on writing a song at, for a portion of every day. So, yeah, so I, I would say uh, on average I've written maybe 35 to 50 songs a week for 37 years. So if you do the math, that's kind of where it adds up to. So how do you hold on to all that stuff? Like how do you, um, uh, how do you um, preserve like the passion for each new song that you uh, write? Like it's a brilliant question, and the answer is you don't. Uh, you know, the answer is for me sometimes it's uh, it's like building a brick wall or cutting my grass, I and mean, it's that. It's just, it's a routine. And every once in a while I get an idea of like, Larry go, or, or some, something something that gets in my head that I go. In fact, I've got one of those ideas right now and I, and I can't wait to get back to Nashville. This guy driving down 465 the other day. It's his title and I can't wait to get home and write it. That's really fun. That's the best part about the music business for me. I love, I love when I'm sitting at a desk by myself with my guitar and there's a blank sheet of paper and I get to fill it up with whatever I want to put on it. Yeah. Whether it's the lot whether it's lies, truth, or indifference, I get to make it up. And when it's a fun and interesting idea and I'm fascinated and passionate about it, oh that's the best. But probably, you know, honestly, probably that only happens about every twenty five or thirty songs and I'm like, oh yeah. The rest of the time, it's like, mm, yeah, that's good. That, that's nice. that rhymes. That's legitimate. You know, nobody's going to shoot me for saying that. You know, it's, I'm, and I, I'm sorry to be so. I'm not being blasé about it. I'm just telling you my my perspective, my truth. And, uh, and if you tell me that, if you tell me that Casting Crowns or Dave Matthews or John Mayer or Paul Simon was passionate about everything they ever wrote down on a piece of paper, I would tell you. That is not the truth. Uh, every every successful songwriter has written a song that was a hit that they are not terribly proud of, but they cashed every check they ever sent. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, right now, the perception is that the contemporary Christian scene is Nashville. Uh -huh. So, if you want to get your song heard, uh, do you is it basically move to Nashville? Um. Many would tell you yes, and um, I would, uh, given all of the, given the options, I would also say yes. Not necessary, uh, but I think unless you've uh, rightly or wrongly, unless you've pitched a tent in the middle of it all for a little while mm -hmm. and showed some real commitment and uh, you know toward 
toward it, that you're just not going to be taken as seriously. It's as simple as that. I'm not telling you to move to Nashville or any of you to move to Nashville or anywhere else who are genre of music is, you know, where the epicenter is. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, with Provident and Word and Sparrow and, you know, every other label that has a publishing company, uh, you know, they're not in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You know? I mean, they're not in Kalamazoo, Michigan. They're in Nashville. Uh, they used to be in Waco or you know, other places, but it's not the same. Uh, unless you can find... Uh, you know, the Luboffs, you know, I don't really know them, but they, they've called me a few times about various things, and mm -hmm. I don't know why. <laughs> something, it was always about the music business or a copyright or something. I think there were a couple of copyrights that, anyway, that I split with them somehow, but, um, I mean, I don't know who they are, but if you can make a connection of an individual that's got a, a, a good reputation, a solid reputation, that might be willing to listen to your songs, and, you know, a smaller publishing situation that would take songs from you through the mail or over the internet or you know, that's fine. It's it's a small world from that perspective. But uh, uh, they're not you know the, the industry's not gonna take you they're always gonna pay attention to the person that's standing in front of them more quickly. Yes sir. Uh, you know there's a lot of organizations out there and I'd like to belong to every one of them, but right. financially looking, right. is there some better than others like Song U and? Um, I'm familiar with Song U only because a very, very dear friend of mine does song critiques for them. Uh, a fellow named Craig Bighart, who's a tremendous songwriter, uh, really gifted guitar player. However, I don't know the depth of their. Uh, I've only gone to Craig's some of Craig's portions of that. Um, website, so I can't, you know, I can't really vouch for it. Um, how can I say this in the most sincere way? Uh, I think what you guys have going on right here is better than belonging to any organization that's 500 miles away for which you are really uh, they might say otherwise, but really what you are is a $35 a year, $35 a year check. And they might send you some sort of standard boilerplate responses to some of your questions or so on and so forth. And I, re and I really mean that. I mean, I was president of the NSAI for years and the songwriter representative on the Country Music Association. And what you guys are here in terms of supporting each other and developing each other is I think far more significant than what they're going to do with you, for you. Uh, so what, what, what would you expect to get out of an organization? Let me ask you that. Well, I found the most beneficial 30 minutes <coughs> I spent in Nashville so far was the one-on-one -on -one with Barbara Cloy, uh, yeah. Ready for the Road, right. where you actually go right in her living room and right. one on one with people. And that's directly with Barbara, right? Yes. That's and then do you, you pay a fee for that? Or? That's like $30 for 30 minutes, but yeah. Yeah, like, like I said, I was surprised that she brought you right to her house. And yeah, I knew she I knew she was doing that. And Barbara's a good egg, and I think she's, you know, she's real good at what she does. So, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not slamming any of these organizations. I'm just saying, you know, you've got each other, and, uh, you know, several of you have really good connections in Nashville uh, and beyond, so. I want my best connections were there, there in Printer's Alley at the hot dog stand with Rick Tiger. Oh. <laughs> you get, get to learn a lot and eat a hot dog at the same time. <laughs> Two best things in the world. <laughs> Other questions or? Yeah. I have two questions. One, um, how important is your dog as far as quality? There's a lot of stuff to do at home. Versus the studio. Right. And um, two, is, does it, is it me just getting older, or does it seem like a lot of the mainstream artists are leaving labels and going independent? Or, or coming up with their own labels? Um, all right. <clears throat> two questions. Uh, demos are very important. 
when you finally get around to uh, deciding that your song is finished and, and ready to be put to uh, to tape or digitized or whatever you're going to do with it, um, I'll, I'll, I'll remember that you may have worked on this song that you're about to record for the last three months or six months and you've poured your sweat and blood into it, so why would you go in? Why, why would you push a, an old cassette player button and play, you know, play it into something that's inferior? So, am I telling you to spend a lot of money it's on it making a demo? No. I'm saying that uh, you and Lincoln could practice and practice and practice Larry Go and get it down really tight, a good vocal. And uh, you have several choices, and a number of choices, one of which is to call Eddie and say, we think we can do this, we need an hour of your time, or whatever that is. I mean, that's up, that's up to you guys to negotiate. Or, you know, their recording equipment is getting absurdly inexpensive, that decent recording equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not a manufacturer, nor am I a salesman, but you can go out there and find some things that are uh, within reach financially that you can learn how to use. And the point is that after all this, like I said, the toy you put into making your song great and right, um, honor it by treating it well from a technologic, from, a, from an audio can I get more specific with that question? For yeah. me? Okay, that's just that's <laughs> for me personally. Um, you know, I'll, I'll have when I record, I'll have some pitch problems on it. We all do. And so, is it more important when you're pitching a song to make sure that all those pitch problems are smoothed out? If the if the sound recording is pretty good, but you know you haven't spent the extra money on the engineering. Mm -hmm. Um, when pitching the song, or you know, should I go and try to spend more money on getting it engineered and you know? Eddie's like, yes. I know what Eddie's <laughs> gonna say. Well, Eddie, and I'll give Eddie and I, I, I guarantee money. Eddie and I are gonna have two entirely different answers to this question, yeah. and that's perfectly fine because. But I mean, I need to know realistically. I write hundreds of songs. I want to yeah. pitch them all. Yeah. I can't afford to do everything I need to do. Okay. Just do all right. What you know? What this? I'm glad you asked this question. I'm gonna give you a lot of detail. I'm going to give you all a lot of detail, and I tell this is part of the uh, part of one of the lessons I have with all my kids. Recording, I just mentioned this earlier when I was talking about Eddie's the two sides of Eddie's brain and the opposite sides of the glass. Recording is not songwriting. Songwriting is over when the song is finished. The next step is you're going to make a demonstration tape of your song. That is not songwriting. That is recording draw a line between them. The songwriting is now over. That's not to say you may not change something a little bit in the recording, but basically the songwriting is over. If you guys start getting hung up in recording technology as songwriters, some of you may have that instinct, and that's all well and good, and I respect that and honor that. But if you start spending more time recording your song than writing your song, you have that is the unforgivable sin for the songwriter. I think that they're two, two separate functions, okay? Now, <clears throat> your pitch, okay? There's not a person in this room who sings in perfect pitch. There's not a person who records in Nashville who sings with perfect pitch. There are some people on the face of the earth, I've heard, that have perfect pitch and sing with it, and good for them. But, uh, you know, Eddie can correct your out, your out of tuneness, but if it's relatively close, if it doesn't make your fillings fall out when you're listening back to it, I think you ought to stay pretty close to your performance. Personal opinion. You go back to, and listen to old Rolling Stone records and tell me if you would have heard if you would have heard the fiddle player for Dave Matthews Band last night, you would have said. Pitch? What pitch? Um, he was horrible. And he's, I've heard him when he was really good, but he was horrible last night. So, I mean, uh, when I say you need a great demo, you need a clean demo, you need a demo that's got some soul to it, you know, you don't need a, you don't need a, 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 a whitewashed, perfect uh, drum loop, you know, where, you know, where you took the kick from an old Led Zeppelin record and, a, you know, a hi-hat from an old Beatles record. You don't need all that crap. You need a good representation of your song. Uh, my opinion, again, I mean, that's all, it's all about opinion, so. 
Uh, did I answer your question? Yeah. I mean, as an artist, I'd like to put together a great release demo that I can sell at gigs. Right. right? Yeah. I'd also like to make just some decent recordings to send to pitch the songs in the industry. If I were to suggest I one of those two options for you, I would say at this point in your life, to the extent that you can afford it, I mean, that's always, that's always the, an issue. Sometimes it's the issue. Um, is that instead of going out and learning how to use a good mic and a compressor, a compressor and, and, and the several other things that you actually should, should know how to use, I'd call Eddie or someone like Eddie and say, uh, how much would it cost me to spend three hours in your studio and, and go and just get as much out of it as you can? The answer? Kick back. <laughs> there, there is no one else like Eddie. <laughs> well, plus he understands where you're coming from. I mean, he's got the. Yeah. Um, as far as your second question goes, I mean, uh, you know, who's selling records in. Uh, you want to talk about something else? <laughs> I do that. You should have seen what I draw. I draw it. Speaking um, of language, elegant language. Um, Nashville uh, is um, Nashville from the perspective of uh, the major kind of music that, that emanates from there, country music and Christian music. It's still pretty much the same old thing. Um, you know, there's the four or five major record labels uh, in both genres. They're doing business the same old way. They're losing money hand over fist. Uh, they'll eventually, they'll never go out of business. I mean, RCA, you got to remember that they didn't, RCA didn't start with Clint Black. RCA started with, like, <clears throat> classical recordings in the 20s. And, you know, oh, and then they had, oh, like Elvis. And, uh, you know, John Denver and Dolly Parton and Waylon Jennings and the hosts. And RCA is probably one of the smaller rosters. These, these record labels have deep, deep reservoirs of, of, of uh, product that they can sell. Well, they're never going to go away. It's just that the independent mindset has caught on with the young folks. You made it for the iTunes and downloading? Yeah, I mean, there's sort of myriad reasons. Uh, the, they got sick and tired of the music that the major labels were putting out. It was like, we don't like that. Because yeah. down with the man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It was a very, it was a rebellion. <laughs> It was a rebellion against, um, yeah. uh, you know, against the, the powers of being. Yeah. So, Toby Keith started his own label, but uh, you know, you know, look, Rascal Flatts, Mike W. Smith, Amy Grant, Chris Tomlin, uh, Point of Grace, Faith Hill, uh, Kenny Chesney. Martina McBride, uh, what's her name, Taylor Swift, they're all on major labels, basically. They're either major labels as in Columbia, Capital, Universal, RCA, Sony, or they're on subsidiary labels funded by the majors. So it hasn't really exploded in those genres like it has in rock and roll. Rock and roll is just all over the place. <laughs> a grade school question that kind of goes with that. Three in a row. <laughs> Four, really, because you asked for detail on the first question. This is really probably grade school, but did, um, do record labels sign songwriters that are not performing to to give songs to the performing Essentially, artists? no. Essentially. I mean, that, that's, that's sort of frowned upon from a legalistic perspective. Okay. But every major company, look, there's there's Sony BMG. There's so actually, as I'm a songwriter, I'm not looking to be signed. Yeah, you know, you're looking to be signed by a music publisher, not, by not, a, publisher. not a record label. Okay. But all of the major companies have their sister, all of the major entities, the international companies have, have their own music publishing counterparts. But that doesn't particularly give you a, a, a foot inside the door with that record. Okay, I think we'll, uh, let's do three more tunes and then, uh, 
see, see what happens. There's, 
it's hard to not enjoy this. I mean, because it's just such a happy, quirky, savvy thing. Uh, and yet, it if you follow that to the furthest extent, it gets like dorky. I mean, it's like it's like this is so much fun and it's so bizarre, but it's also like, oh come on, this is like he could sing this on the Lawrence Walk show and people would like it, which is fine, you know. Okay, so <laughs> I'm not slamming it from that perspective, but the lyric is so, I mean, it, for the most part, it's so well crafted and it's so, yeah, fairly. It, it's it's written in a lighthearted manner, but it's a very serious thing. You could take without changing the tempo, without changing anything except what surrounds the piano and, and your vocal, and just make it an entirely different, give it an entirely different setting, and it would become a whole new animal that I think might have a broader view. So so and I'm think instead think more of uh, uh, let's see instead of this think more of uh, somebody like how would Randy Newman something like short people or you know, I love LA with that oh, tongue and yeah. cheek kind of thing. Because uh, he'd take he'd take these changes which are really quite hip in that cool melody and uh, put it in a different setting and I think it might elevate the, the tune. Um, so generally speaking I, I mean I I aside from <coughs> the presentation which again I think is enjoyable, but it's not going to fly far in the industry. My my thoughts only. I, I do have a, I do have a couple of questions now. It is uh, um, the second line of your refrain, uh, but I've learned a lot from what I got. What does that mean? I, I, that then I mean I just uh, it, this was a, a throwaway song. Uh -huh. I was producing a guy last year, and, and we did a version of Ain't Misbehaving, yeah. and we just ramped it up, and made it more modernistic, and, and I thought, I think I'll see if I can write a little time song. Oh, okay. But um, that line when I when it popped down my head was, you know, I'm happy for what I've got, I'm thankful. For what okay. I've got. Okay. Uh, the. Uh, The, the, sec, the second last verse, the one that has living in sorcery, I, I, I just didn't understand that verse, but again, I'm stupid, and that's not a huge issue. I mean, I just think there's a whole lot here, throwaway song or not. Uh, I mean, I think uh, I think it's a really good piece of writing, and uh, I think you ought to maybe reel it back in and say, it's pretty cool. Taking that without a recording. Yeah. That was just, like I said, thrown together really fast. Like, what? Oh, throw some tomato sauce in. Okay, I have some potatoes. <laughs> and it's also got, I mean, um, it's also got a bit of a a Catholic bent because of the rosary yeah. and the Bless Me Father and all that, that stuff. That was kind of a, a jokey thing, too. Oh, first. Are you making fun of the Catholics? No, but uh, <laughs> I was down in Nashville and. Uh, there there aren't any Catholics. Yeah, there's no Nashville. <laughs> Not that I know. There's millions of Catholics in there. But, um, yeah. All right, well, that's cool. Who, who, anybody have uh, any thoughts or comments for Steve on this? Yeah. Being Catholic, I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I've never heard Broadway Jesus <laughs> just did. <laughs> <laughs> they call it Christian Cabaret. That's what I heard it. Uh, Nashville. Yeah. Cool. Is a, is a word sorcery. So sorcery is like the uh, sin of rebellion. Is like that of witchcraft. Is that living in rebellion or? No. If my my nephew's a rapper, and I just wanted to throw myself in for him. Well, yeah. And I, I I like the. My daughter's laughing when just chilling with the homies and the crew. I've never yeah. about her. <laughs> yeah. I like it like that pet peeve is uh, whenever you mention God or anything pertaining to him, they should be capitalized like Father, with the word him. Oh, okay. Anything that, that references 
God should serve capital. And it always doesn't. That's just a pet peeve. The General Assembly I'm attending this week. Boy, you were all over in your grave. <laughs> We've done the, one of the kids, one of the kids in the, one of the kids in my youth group has uh, changed the theme, which is what's it called? Healing the world. Healing and wholeness no, for healing and broken. broken. Yeah, yeah. They changed it to uh, uh, green lesbians for universal health care. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was thinking about getting up and saying it at the closing worship tonight. <laughs> Who's next? Thanks, Steve. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't help. What would your life be like if you paid attention and paid close attention to the signs in front of you? You might. Couple of exceptions, but um, 
I, I love I love the vehicle of the way you wrote. My ver the verses are by far my favorite part of the song. Um, and I want to get to the, to the refrain in a moment. And I love I love the vehicle, the, the little pattern you set up with repeating the middle two lines. Uh, not exactly, but you gave them a little more breadth the second time you sang it. And that's very cool. Uh, very well done. And then you carry the, the line pattern through, of course, uh, into the uh, eighth line. So real good work there. <coughs> and uh, so you follow your intuition when you're ready. Um, <coughs> so I, I really applaud that all, all the way through. It's great. Um, however, I think you kind of drop the ball in the in the chorus or the refrain um, from from both the lyrical and the musical perspective. It get it gets a little muddy and um, indistinct musically. It just kind of hovers around that E minor and A chord and it doesn't it kind of just doesn't go anywhere. Choruses of course, generally speaking, are supposed to kind of be the high point from all perspectives and maybe lift out of the out of the same range that you're singing in and lift it up a little bit. It just kind of uh, just kind of lays there, um, and and as good as the language was, I is I believe in the verses, it gets a little convoluted in the, in the refrain. Um, and the word "nod" for as great as it is, a pure rhyme for God, it, it seems to. I mean, I think you did your best with it, but it's sort of like okay, I gotta get this in there so I get this great rhyme. For it. It's more of a, a rhyme than it is a, an acceleration of the idea, I think. Um, but again, I, I think the idea itself is uh, is excellent. But it probably needs some work. It probably needs some, especially in that, especially in chorus. Um, you might just think about stripping it down and starting it over the chorus, and just just take a new, give it a break for a few weeks, and then just go back and take it, take a new approach to it. That's hard to do, but might be worthwhile. Comments from the peanut gallery? Since you put it that way. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Lynn. There's a sweet song. Some of these up Like the rock. 
rising of the sun It always helps to complete the day Me, that's where it's where you know really going on. But I also 
<coughs> love the title of the song and love how it sort of completes the, the thoughts that you're building in the, in the verses. It's, it's just really simple. Simple is great, in my opinion. And, uh, um, have you done a recording of this song? Because I think... Have you practiced it very much? Well, no, I think, uh, you know, it's, you hear some wonderful harmonies kind of embracing that, that <coughs> chorus especially. I mean, you know, it's just one of those songs, it's, it's quite lovely. I mean, I could, I could sit here and I suppose I could critique or tear apart some of the lyrics and the verses, but please, I don't want to. Oh. I have no intention to because, it, you know, some songs, you know, songs exist for a variety of reasons. That, this, this is a lovely, soft, Ballad? Yeah. Song. Sincere. You said that. Did you say that? Did you say that? It was just funny. It was funny. Well, then I said it. Uh, this is a lovely, soft song. Uh, no, it's, it really is. It's a, it's a kind of a precious little pop, and you know, why, why, why would I, you know, be an SOB and say, what do you mean it's waves upon the sea? That's a bunch of crap. No, that's fine. I mean, you know, read a song. Uh, that's what, it's great. It's a beautiful song. I like you know it. You know what it reminded me of? Vintage Michael Martin Murphy. Yeah, Wildfire and all that. Yeah. Means it's old and out of place. <laughs> Let me interpret that for you. What he really meant to say. <laughs> uh, who else wants to beat Timothy up because of this? Oh, I won't beat him up. I love Tim. We've been to that wonderful album together. But what I was hoping to hear in the chorus, he did near the end. He started higher. Yeah. And came down. I'd love to hear that in, in the whole thing and make what he was doing, the harmony that you're talking yeah. about that would wrap underneath. To, to to go up on that first note. It's just like that with you. Because he's got that pure clean thing. If I did it, it would go you know, it would have gravel in it. But for him that purity that he can't still keep the soft of the song. But boy, the chorus. Yeah. There would be no doubt we're in that chorus. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yes, sir. But the line he's singing would be the harmony. Uh huh. Cool. You can even uh, go as far as to say, like, um, each note that you, or each word that you sing could be uh, made into like a like a chord of sorts, you know, with uh, different voices singing at the same time. And so, like, you know, uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, like, um, helplessly hoping. Right. Yeah. Where you yeah. really can't sing that by yourself, you know. Right. It could be one of those types. Good, are fun. good uh, that's a good analogy, actually. It's excellent. Yes, sir. Didn't quite have the 39, I love the rainy nights, but he gave it a run for his money. <laughs> yeah, that's right, he did. Good point. 16. Good job. Job to Promise and hope are keeping company. <coughs> Very nice. Those, that's. That's, yeah, that's good stuff that's, right there. Uh, <coughs> oh, oh, great. Oh, oh. Can I make an announcement anyway? No, you are. Oh. <laughs> no, I just uh, return to... Uh, that's sometimes that's what you got to do. Return to our focus here um, with uh, Frank. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just CD. Frank brought CD. It's very close. Are we ready to go? Oh, okay. CD. Disclaimer, it's not a comedy song. <coughs> oh, shit. Oh. 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 You just it. You couldn't think of that. I was just a modern time Santa. Working at the local mall So many boys and girls I thought I'd heard it all Till I met this little girl She said that Susie was her name When I asked her what she wanted Said I only want one. 
Very good job. No, he told me that, but I just thought <laughs> it would be funny if we were all here just like, laughing and scared. <laughs> so, so is that a true story? They're all dying. I can't remember. Have you seen that? No. All right. Is that you singing, by the way? No, that that was. So you just hired some people to do a little recording. Uh, a friend of mine used to be in a band with me. Yeah, that's cool. All right, a uh, couple of big picture things. First of all, in, in some ways, uh, I won't, I won't even say that, but um, in some way, well, I will. In some ways, I'm thinking of Jody's song. Uh, this, this, in, in, in because a couple of things come to mind. First of all. Uh, you just wrote this by yourself, right? I mean, yes. it's, yeah. It, it's a. Uh, I mean, it's really it's really well written. It's it's, you know, it, 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 you're telling a story, and the story is very clear. There's no uh, mystery about what's going on here, um, and it's expressed simply. And the story develops, and you know, has a beginning, a middle, middle, and an end. Uh, First-person perspective on a situation, and uh, and you know, you you wrote the lyric very well, very very clearly, and I, and I commend that. Um, you know, and the melody is is what it is. It's it's pretty kind of kind of stock middle of the road road kind of countryish kind of country kind of country folkish, and and and, and that is fine too. And the little recording is is very sweet and uh, um, uh, befitting the song. You know, and I guess my big picture issue with it is uh, it, it, it's, it's just got that, it's just got that sort of old-fashioned storytelling uh, personality to it. That, that there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's just, it would be very, very difficult in 2009, 2010, 2011, to find an artist that would record something like this. I mean, you know, back in the, you don't have to go way back, but you know, certainly 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, there were people around who probably would have done this. Oh yeah, people like Bobby Goldsboro or Rod, yeah, uh, Red Sovine, and, and frankly, quite a few others. It's just a format and a style that has probably seen better days. Not, I mean, and I. So, I'm not. That's not a. That's not a critique. It, it, I mean, and it's not a slam. It's just, just a harsh bit of reality. I think for for a piece of work like this. But you know, from the perspective of writing in meter and telling a story clearly and using rhyme well, and you know, it's it's a it's it's just a. It's just a kind of song that. It's probably lost its audience, uh, uh, but for the most part, I, you know, I commend you for it. And not to be bare, I've, I've got, I've got a closet full of songs that have lost their audience. Well, here's the really good news. There's not very we'll just to record it. What? There's not any real new Christmas songs well, out there. That's true. And so there's only so many times you can re record "Oh, Holy Night" or "Come All You Faithful." So you know, if someone's looking for a Christmas song. But you've got one of the only new ones on the planet, so. <laughs> That's a good point. You know, you catch an evergreen Christmas song, you can get it pretty well. Yeah. But again, uh, so so those are my comments. I mean, I don't know if you if you have any response questions or. Well, the fact that it runs five plus minutes is. Yeah, I'm sure a hindrance. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> hey, there's a D day chance to go to the restroom. <laughs> Once you hit the stage, you might as well keep the stage, right? Okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. You keep the stage, but you might not be able to keep their attention. But For my second it. number, I'm going to continue my first number. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the song. <laughs> Start to finish instead of up and up down. You know what I mean? Well, that's good. Yeah, that, excellent. Yeah. Excellent advice. If tempo just a little bit, mm -hmm. it would not be five and a half minutes. I mean, it would shorten it a little bit. Yeah. I, don't, I think you could speed it up quite a bit, actually, without yeah. leaving, um, using the tender. Yeah. You don't have to repeat that for it. It's fine, too. Well, that's true. 
No, that's good. That's a great point. I mean, this could even have fallen in that kind of, uh, you know, cause that coward of the county kind of, you know, even Kenny Rogers did a bunch of stuff like this. I, I still, but even with that, I mean, I, I still think it would have to be contemporized from from a lyrical perspective. It's got to have some yeah, you know, beatbox. That's what we need. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Susan, Dad, Christmas, <laughs> 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 Dad, <laughs> Mom, Crap. <laughs> 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 Frank knows how to well, I'll be <laughs> that. <laughs> anyway, Frank, no, good work, seriously. I mean, I, I, I commend you on the work there. Oh, yeah, we'll work. Very nice. Who's next? Kim. Yeah, photos. <laughs> Every Sunday morning, I see the shining face, and everyone can see how your smile lights up the place. You bring the greatest gift. I just sat here and 
said nothing. <laughs> That, that, yeah, that, that's beautiful. Yep, it is. It's a beautiful song. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really have, uh, <clears throat> maybe maybe just a couple things here and there to say, but I, I would just sort of lift that up as a very nice piece of writing, really well delivered here, in a live setting that has got to be intense. But, I mean, I... Because I'm here, I'm just singing it. We're in like this is difficult. Um, so, uh, um, I, you know, I just don't really have a whole lot of criticism of this. You know, it's uh, it is a, is it a massively is it a massive hit song? No. It is a, is it a really well written and focused song? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I gather it had a specific purpose, given the uh, uh, parenthetical statement underneath the title. Yes, my pastor and I were talking about these two young men who are in their twenties, and they are just an inspiration to everybody. And he said that line: "If everybody could love that way." Oh. And that's and then that night I started this. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> you know. Uh, I was going to give you a, just a minor thought. It's not a, a suggestion or anything like that, but the very last line of the first verse, uh, you bring the greatest gift and gladly give it all, mm -hmm. unconditional love. From a childlike heart, I mean, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's a clear thought and statement. I struggled. I was kind of hoping I'd hear a little better rhyme in there. It just sort of left me dangling, but... <clears throat> This might be a really stupid thing to do, but when you go home and I think, what if you repeated the word unconditional there at the end, so unconditional love, or, or some kind of love, unconditional, uh, uh, it picks up a little, little I, I'm not saying you should do that, I'm just saying you should think about it. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know, I mean, I'm really at, uh, I, I'm, I'm searching here. I haven't really scratched any other notes on here because I was just enjoying the song, you know, which is maybe I should just shut up. Well, Tom, let's look at this. You got the bright stars, the, the title here, and it is uh, the payoff line at the back end of the bridge. Uh, what do you think about the bridge? And in conjunction with that question, uh, is that I mean, it is the title of the song, but maybe should it be the title of the song. So, I leave that. Okay. Down. Well, I mean, I will leave that. Can't think. Of it, but, uh, <laughs> um, I I think uh, I think the first line of the bridge is um, rather powerful, to tell you the truth, because it's uh, yeah. It's not the first line. It's the it's the payoff. The yeah. Um, you know. Uh, let's see. I, you know, these questions are hard to answer. This like, Tom, what do you think about that? Tell me or I'll kill you. Um, <laughs> you know, it's uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean I think I think your your uh, your challenge there is uh, legitimate, Eddie. I mean it doesn't I mean I I can live with it or or uh, I mean I can live with it the way it is. I, I don't know that whether it should be the title of the song, um, it's uh, in today's in today's internet iTunes world. If I heard the song and had no title to run with and went to try to find the song, I would never find it. Never. Yeah. You wouldn't think Brightest Star. I'm not, I'm not questioning that it's a neat title, but if if you really want your song is accessible until you're just a mega hit, I think uh -huh. you really need to you title them in. The, the most obvious way possible. Yeah. I thought about that, but I didn't want it to be too long where they have a whole phrase for the title. It's, like, well, it's a mouthful. Yeah, and you'd have to, if you did that, you'd have to look at, because you've done something different with the chorus in both first and second. You've done live that way and love that way, and you'd have to choose. Uh, yes. Well, what if you just called it If We Could Learn? Hi. Or Learn to Love. Well, that's not the thing that hangs in my head when it's so No. Especially. 
<laughs> and secondly, I, I'm not, I, now this is where I, this is what I've taught them, and you can completely override me as being a chump, but I, but I've always told them that the bridge, the crowning point of the bridge, and the haymaker that they throw is the last line of the bridge, is the apex of the song, and to me, this song is like really good, and that last line of the bridge is like really just so good. <coughs> That's just my humble opinion. So I think that that should be your hammer. And I think that the rest of the song is a lot stronger. But that's just me. I like it. I really like the bridge. You like it? And having that payoff makes sense. But is the payoff the music or the payoff the words? Is that what your point is? Um, it just didn't. Uh, it just didn't paddle my canoe much. I just, I just loved the rest of it so much, and when I got to that, I just felt, uh, just felt anticlimactic. I just like it should go somewhere. It kind of, like, oh, the brightest star. Uh, sounds like it came from. I, I don't know. I just, uh, the rest of it's so good. Right. Well, if, if you wanted an option for change, you could just repeat the line. You just keep on shining. You just keep on shining. You just keep on shining. Shining and then right back into the chorus. Yeah. <laughs> Not, not exactly. <laughs> Sorry, Do you remember? He used the word through with the pen. He just keeps on shining. And elevated. He's, he's giving you, you know, really, you know, and cool And then hit the chorus and like skip the guy yeah. to scar. Yeah. It only happens once in the song. And lean on what you, lean on the more obvious word. We look to you, fearless leader, to give us strength in our time of need. Unfortunately, when I hear a song on the radio and, it, and I don't have a radio that tells me what the song is, yeah. I, <laughs> I've got a, just a stock truck that you get to listen to the stuff, but if I go home and I want to find it, it just drives me nuts. And the song is, you know, purple violets, and it's really nowhere even in the song, so I can't find it. Nice work would be a shame people could find it if they wanted to. What well, you know, I don't know. I mean, that, you know, it, it brings up a good point. Um, and I, I'm not, uh, and, and I think, you know, Mike, right? Yeah. Mike's option is, is very, uh, very legitimate. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, you know, I, I can't, I agree with Eddie. Every, everything is, is, it's just a really well written song and I mean I'm I'm down with the bridge the way it is, but I think there's options and since uh, you know you're getting some uh, hesitation from some folks, it's probably worth exploring some some alternative uh, ways to So what do you think a suitable title could be? A suitable title? Bridge over troubled water. <laughs> Um, the only recognizable look is the learning of that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's true. Oh, so I've done that once twice, didn't it? Yeah, first yeah. line and last yeah. line. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's just right. It's my color. Oh, okay.
That's cool. I really tell you. And I mean, who am I to argue with uh, the wisdom of David or whomever it was they say these days wrote the Psalms? It was Barack Obama. Um, so, um, <laughs> no, I mean, and I so I think you you interpreted them uh, in a very uh, humble and dignified way. I mean. Uh, and again, following this lyric sheet that you scribbled quickly in the body uh, during, during, which means you weren't paying attention, which really, really hurts my feeling. He did this with uh, you. you scribbled before you got here while you were with that. Got I'm cool. just kidding. No, there were, there were some, uh, a lot of us were scribbling some mistakes in the lyric sheet. So, uh, and you didn't exactly follow it word for word, which is fine, but um, I, I just really like the way this thing flowed. And uh, um, I could I could hear a very cool little simple kind of acoustic guitar, maybe little percussion kind of treatment of this thing, almost like an old it's only about two weeks old Harry Belafonte so record or something. Or just something really, really. Well, that's good. Trini Lopez. Trini Lopez. Yeah, Trini. <coughs> um, somebody remind us. Uh, what song this is? Sir, oh, well, I think it's 139. I think it yeah. is, too. Uh, and any other comments for Bruce? I really dig this song. I'm not... Yay. Yeah, I really like the guitar voicing. Um, like of the chords, I mean. Um, like uh, playing the ninth up on the E string. It's really nice. Folk, not it is. Not hip hop. Not folk. <laughs> well, I think that was that someone asked me something about the genre. This is all new to me. This this whole industry. Uh, these are just some. Of, I have songs that I did in Nashville that I wrote 35 years ago as a new Christian that I'm finally recording. Oh. And I don't know anything about it, so it's, it's a big learning curve. And they asked me what genre I'm going. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I got stuck in uh, I think folk. Christian uh -huh. folk. Yeah. Old folk. <laughs> well, very good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, let's keep going. This is uh, Fishes and Love. We've got six copies of the song. Six. Oh, yeah, there we go. Very On the table. Wow. Yeah. Let's make more. Two loaves, five fishes, and six lyric sheets. the partridge. in here. Did you bring an accompanist? No, I I um hired him just now. Oh, <laughs> that's it. What did that set you back?
Just see what it sounds like trying to when you learn how to cover that E up on the first fret. What uh, what the uh, what it sounds like with just sort of standard major chords instead of the major seven, just the five. Okay. I dig it. I mean, it's got it's got a you know cool groove. It's got a, a real kind of real accessible feel. Um, the lyric is uh, quite lovely. I think it's really very poignant. It, it, it kind of takes a bit of, uh, you know, some of the Lord's words and, and puts them into uh, very accessible uh, and quite elegant language. Uh, and I I dig the bridge. I'm sure Eddie did. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Prater, bridge killer. <laughs> <laughs> Just to know where. <laughs> um, have you got a 
pretty good repertoire of songs that you've created? Or? Um, I've written probably about 15 songs. Oh, and this is one of them. This is one of them. Very good. Well, I think you're, uh, you got a great, I mean, are they all kind of in this vein? I mean, is it? Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm, that's what I was going to ask. By the way, you before. sing quite well, too. I, Thank you. I was just shaking, but. Um, yeah, what me. genre is that, do you think? I'm always wondering what genre I write in. I, Eddie, do you think most of my songs sound this genre? Uh, you've got some other stuff that's a little more soulful than this. This is, this is, you know, kind of a mid-70s wildfire kind of thing going on. Yeah, it came up again. <clears throat> like one yeah. That could have been my <laughs> no, no, I think actually it was a, it was a, 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 a interpretation. Oh, yeah, you mean the way you play it? I've never heard before, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's some Yeah, you got a real soulful, blue eyed soul, you know, uh, way about you. And, you know, this would work on an album, like, with that, though. It, it's, it's consistent, it's cool. I mean, like the bridge. Because I like the go-go <laughs> violin, and I don't know if that kind of stuff would fit my when I'm singing or not. But. Oh, when you mix those with the bagpipes, yeah, that would work really yeah. good. <laughs> Somebody said I sounded like Gaither or something like Ouch. that. Ouch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Somebody said the chords were kind of like Gaither, but I don't think that. I don't think the dobro is going to do real well with his major seven. <laughs> okay. I don't know anything about like I'm barely able to play the guitar. So. No, that's okay. That's okay. So. No, I think I think there's a, you know, I, I think the major seven chords may place it a little more into that uh, wildfire seventies thing than you may think, which is why I was thinking maybe you ought to experiment with trying to give it uh, something. I told Jody or it's just just. Street it up a little bit. It's 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 a little it's a little pristine, which is the only. That's not a critique, but I think it. But everything behind it is very hip. And it, it could yeah. it could uh, handle some, you know. It's hard for me because I write point. I write music and I write melodies and lyrics. I don't write chords. Chords. My dad comes up with the chords for me for all oh. my songs, oh. and so it's. It's like in, in, interpretation sometimes gets lost, or yeah. I don't really know right. how to. Yeah, that's a weird uh, phenomenon. I've got a number of students at Belmont over the last few years that say that. They, uh, well, I don't play an instrument, so. Yeah. And then you know, like they'll sing a song a cappella, and it's kind of nice, and you can sort of feel it fall in. They like, have good rhythm and nice melodies, and then you can really feel it sort of fall into something. And then a week later, they'll bring a guitar player in and sing the same thing, and it's horrible. Mm -hmm. It's like. You no, know, those aren't the right yeah. words. Yeah, I feel that way sometimes. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. great work. Thank you. Well, thanks for I coming. did All write right. it in a very inspiring church service, so anyway, you said it was sounded like something from the Lord, so. Yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, the Lord was speaking like seven days. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think some of the major sermons that could be replaced with nights and things like that that would, would give them a little more contemporary sound. I heard a lot of songs. I thought, ooh, yeah, I I hear chords that would just really. Um, be well, my my dad's straight out of the seventies, you know. Sure. So everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What are some of the options? Wait, so are many of you? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no, no, no. That's all right. We do abuse, but to be fair, oh, her chart doesn't really have all those major seven yeah. stuff. I just got the one that major seven. I did all that. <laughs> oh, that's fine. No, that, that's perfectly fine. I, mean, I know you were on the spot there too, trying to come up in there. Well, uh, anyway, that was good. I, you know, you just keep writing songs, and, and uh, you just, you'll, you'll, uh, and anyway, it was very good. Yes, sir. I'm trying to just make one suggestion at the conclusion of the song. You start off "Weary Traveler," which is the first verse. This next line maybe should be "Wounded Soldier." Just bring it all again together. Your 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 conclusion. Weary travel, lay your head, weary, or wounded soldier, cast your burdens here, and then the last line's fine. So it just brings the second verse into the conclusion. Instead of the first verse, why? I think I thought, I thought about that. Do you think that's what we're thinking? It's fine. No, I think that's a legitimate idea, idea because it kind of, it's like scrolling credits at the end of the movie. I didn't know because of the title, if I should just keep it that same. Oh, thing. I think you're fine to follow that suggestion.
You what? Um, I don't really have any um, lyric sheets. So. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Just write down as you go. Who wants to take you him outside? <laughs> don't worry. Is there I got on um, one. I have two right now. Really sloppily because that's just what I am. Yeah. What's the name of your song? Um, shade, shades of Grey. Um, I don't need one, I'll just switch them. Okay, unless, unless you want me to have one. <laughs> Lucky? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh. Yeah. You sang to play loud? Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Then maybe you don't need it. Sounds <laughs> good. Just bell it out. Maybe. <laughs> so you want the other one? Hold on. Right here. Professional sound person. Have you been to one of these meetings before? No. How'd you hear about it though? Um, my dad's. I'm interested. Uh, actually, no, I'm, I'm dead set on going to that one. So. Oh, is, so are you, are you still in high school? Yeah, I'm a junior. Oh. You're going to be a junior? I am. I'm going to be a junior. Please. <coughs> Um, this is just kind of like a puzzle um, and I just kind of pulled it together. I have like a whole bunch of different puzzle pieces and it's kind of just like a loop, basically, so, you know. Um, structure up front but yeah. it, it seemed a it, it seemed a little bit fractured but all was forgiven when you got to that little refrain at the end which was brilliant frankly mm -hmm. uh, both musically and lyrically because it uh, no matter what you said prior to that it all made sense in those three lines that came up yeah so just the best the glue yeah yeah, yeah. well uh, 
best of luck to you, man. I, just keep writing songs. That's all you got to do. Is, and that's not all you have to do, but right now that's all you have to do. Well, and yeah. you have to go to school and sleep and eat, but, you know. Good grades, you can get okay. Yeah. That's Save right. up $32,000. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Per, year. <laughs> per year. Per year. And guess who your teacher will be? I <laughs> <laughs> can help you get in. Uh, that's great. Yeah, sure. well, I've never really played that all the way through before. Now you have. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, no. Come on. It's just us. You know, you said something earlier that you might play such a tune too. Uh, yeah, I swear I had out of time. I'd rather play. Oh, we've got plenty of tricks. Yeah, you have plenty of time. We've got to have the national tonight. Welcome to us. Um, there, are, there are a couple other topics, that, um, and we're, I really am running out of time. I, I've got to pick. Uh, I've got to pick up uh, my gang at the downtown in fifty-five minutes. So that shouldn't be a problem. You probably think they're still there. <laughs> oh, I know. Seriously, yeah. But just think how funny it'd be if you showed up back there now. Yeah, oh. be about as funny as Frank's song. That's always a fun one. Yeah. What's that? The, the price tag, whatever. What we mini pearl thing you got? Come on, yeah. That's my witness. There you go. We that's that. how you do it. Um, you that thing with keeps me preaching. <clears throat> Are you uh, like now? Do you have something in particular you you think about sharing? You mean sing? Uh, a couple things I like to sing. But, uh, well, I mean everyone's gonna ask for Sixteenth Avenue or when she danced with me or this old house. Those would be the three that I would. Really? Well, I think for a firm that's for my own so. They'll get that on the CD. Let's talk in yeah, it's not like you're not live in <laughs> Whatever you want to uh, just whatever play. You want play. Tell us how the song happened. Okay, sure. Give us the insight before you sing it. Give us the segue. Uh, uh, um, he's quite articulate. <laughs> Well, um, I'll sing, uh, yeah, I'll sing a song called Prayer with Desperate Man, but that, you know, yeah, it's a good one. you heard it. Thing. 
he ever saw the sea I come from a long line of blood when the times get hard I won't give up forever's in my heart and in my blood the sea I come from a long line Years went by and we had a son Now he thinks that he's found someone for him And they're planning a wedding Call me up on the phone today Just to see what I had to say to him I said what his grandfather used to say to me it's been handed down for age. It runs in the family. I said you come from a long life. When the times get hard, you won't give up. the uh, Trinity Broadcasting Network for uh, three and a half days without leaving my house one time. My wife and kids were out of town. Just ate donuts and drank a little wine. He made the wind to whisper Probably likes Amy Grant, 
But I think the great I am loves the prayer of a desperate That's what he understands. If you want to witness the power and the glory of his heavenly band, Watch how he answers and gathers his dancers for the prayer of a desperate. The prayer of a desperate. Now I go to church and I say my prayers in bed. And I read the word and nourish my heart and head. He's known me from my birth, but I think he wrongs the earth for the prayer of a desperate. That's what he understands. If you want to witness the power and see all heaven fall beneath his command, Watch how he answers and gathers his dancers for the prayer of a desperate man. The prayer of a desperate man. The prayer of a Christian music industry a little bit. I, I don't, I have lots of friends in the Christian music business. I, I've never really been a part of it myself, professionally, I mean, uh, directly. Uh, I've kind of dabbled here and there. And, um, uh, but uh, one of my best buddies is the new CEO of Word Records, and I've got an old pal who runs Provident, and Billy Hearn, who runs Sparrow, is an old, old golfing buddy of mine. but. I've just never really been in the business, uh, in that part of the business. <coughs> I don't know this anything's changed a whole lot. Uh, I do know this, uh, and it's not that you're in it for the money, <laughs> but uh, <coughs> even worse than the country business, um, unless you're a recording artist in the Christian music business, or your Bill Gaither, uh, you're not going to make a whole lot of money. Uh, so don't do it for the money. <laughs> uh, and that's not to discourage you from that at all. Um, so if you're not doing it for the money, how do you get hurt? If you don't care about the money, but you still want your music out there. What does out there mean? Available, or I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean that's a real yes. wasn't a just to be heard, yeah. Play picked up. It's probably a topic for next time. I mean, it's a, it's a long, deep topic, and uh, you know, like the kids that I teach in college who are 19, 20, 22 years old, uh, most of them are, you know, first of all, they're you know, they're invisible. I mean, that nothing's ever gonna. They're indestructible, so they, they can stay out at 4 o'clock in the morning playing clubs and crawl out of bed at 7.30 and go to class the next morning like nothing ever faced. If I did that, I'd die. I'd be dead by Tuesday. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. so um, but uh, frankly, at least in Nashville, uh, that's the thing I encourage all my kids to do is go out and play, 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 play if they can. Um, All right, I'm going to leave you with one other song uh, uh, that I wrote a long time ago. Uh, it's about Nashville, actually. Recorded by a fellow Pennsylvanian. That's Rock Texas. <laughs> we'll do that. You do the nitney do the nitney for one. Ah, right. Oh, so <laughs> Thank you. 
Bless the boys who make the noise on the 16th Avenue. 